got it wrong. I am not the head of Department of Architecture or Industrial Design. I am the former head of Department of Architecture, the former head of Industrial Design, and the former head of Urban Design at School of Planning and Architecture. At present, I am professor in the Department of Architecture. So uh, this being something which uh, is very unusual for me, uh, we at the School of Planning and Architecture never actually get to talk with our prospective students because they all come to us through the, the JE examination and uh, we, we never get to talk to them before they actually join the school. So this is very unusual for me to be speaking to uh, school students who are likely to become architects. And I just, uh, I just take a minute to sort of uh, explain the circumstances in which we are. And uh, as you all know, these are very special times. These are, uh, I would say, even uh, worrisome and scary times. And uh, one of the things uh, which keeps one keeps hearing is that, uh, you know, what is going to happen uh, in, in the next few months and then will it ever be the same uh, when we come back to uh, a normal, which, will it be the same normal or not? And uh, one of the things which is a recurring uh, theme is that uh, there will be a lot of effect on the economy. And as you know, that buildings are a very, very important part of the economy. Uh, buildings uh, are where actually the economy happens. So that could raise a question as to whether, you know, there is there's, uh, going to be a big hit on buildings as well. So uh, I would just like to uh, posit here that uh, being an architect and having a career in architecture is not only uh, buildings, is not only designing buildings, and it's not only about having them, uh, you know, built. There is, uh, there is a lot more to architecture, which is beyond just the designing of new buildings. And uh, there, are, there are areas which architects of this country have not really explored enough. And there is a lot to do in, uh, in architecture uh, with the buildings that are already there. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the historic relics, which have their own value, but we have lots and lots and lots of buildings which are not really being used suboptimally. And uh, somebody sometime has got to come around to make them better, right? So uh, even if new buildings are not going to be built for some time, I would say you needn't worry, in fact, uh, you will be the only persons and uh, the best qualified ones to really bring the turnaround by repurposing buildings, by making buildings better, by ma making buildings uh, fit for new uses, which might come out after the pandemic subsides and uh, new businesses may start and uh, they all are not be requiring new buildings. So uh, a lot has been said, a lot has been written about it. I would just like to assure you that a career in architecture is just as glorious it's going to be as it has ever been. So uh, if you are thinking of becoming an architect, uh, this is the first thing you have to remove from your mind, whether there's going to be a future or not. There is going to be a future and you are going to make it. So think of it that way. So with that, I would uh, just like to present uh, my institution, which is the School of Planning and Architecture, uh, New Delhi. I would uh, now like to share my screen. So as you know, my name is Manoj Mathur and uh, we are part today of this first session of Next Level to give you an idea of what I'm going to talk about in my 15 minutes. There are four things here which you can see on the screen. 
Uh, can everybody see in the screen? I just want to be sure. Yes, sir. We can see the screen. Sir. Okay. So uh, there are these four things which you see: institution, academics, fundamics, and randomics. Now <laughs> there are two strange words here: the fundamics and randomics. I'm sure all of you know what's the institution and what's academics. So uh, I, let me just tell you: they are very, very purposely coined and inserted here. And you'll just get to know about it as we go along. So uh, to tell you about the institution, uh, we are one of the oldest institutions uh, in the country, which is uh, imparting education in architecture. Uh, we started as far back as 1942, and uh, we've been going on at it since then. The School of Planning and Architecture, the complete entity, came into being in 1969. So uh, that, when it happened, when the School of Planning and Architecture actually happened in 1969, and it, in 1981, it became a deemed university. It was actually the first university of that time in uh, South Asia, a university for exclusively architecture and planning, that's habitat studies. And, and uh, later on, of course, uh, we had other universities which did the same thing. But SPA, New Delhi, happened to be the first of all of them. And uh, today, of course, there are other SPAs also, SPA Bhopal and SPA Vijayawada, which in a way you could say is a measure of the success of SPA Delhi. SPA Delhi today, along with the other SPAs, is an institution of national importance. Uh, so this is a moniker which is given to uh, very few institutions who are supposed to be the leaders in their field. And uh, having got that uh, distinction, we are uh, totally committed to staying uh, in the top schools of this country. The campus of the SPA uh, was established uh, in two parts. First, we had uh, uh, a campus for the planning faculty, and uh, then we had a new building for the architecture faculty. They are a few uh, meters apart, half a kilometer, if I may say so. And they are located in a place which is called Indra Prastha Estate in New Delhi. So uh, for all of you who are coming to be joining here uh, from outside Delhi, it is very close to the New Delhi railway station and very close to the interstate bus terminus. That, uh, that used to also be the residential campus, but uh, because of expansion and the needs of uh, accommodating more students, we had to move our residential campus to uh, Maharani Bagh, which is near New French Colony in South Delhi. And uh, that's about uh, seven or eight kilometers away from the academic campus and uh, students have to actually travel from there every day uh, to the academic campus and go back in the evening. So uh, this is, uh, in a sense, I would say a very, very characteristic urban or I would say a metropolitan kind of campus. Uh, we are right in the heart of the city. Uh, we are not a we are not away from the city in our own little cocoon. We are not uh, uh, sort of sequestered from every side. And it's not as if students, once they are in the campus, they don't have to engage with the city at all. Students uh, who come to the SPA New Delhi have to engage with the city all the time. And so uh, this, which looks like a disadvantage of having the hostel and the academic campus separated and students have to travel uh, between them, we would like to see that as an advantage because uh, we see that engagement with the city as a very important part of the learning experience. The school, as I said, is in two parts, the planning campus and the architecture campus. So I would be basically talking about uh, the B-Arch course, undergraduate architecture course. I would also 
briefly mention about the planning courses because all of you would also be eligible to appear for the planning entrance examination, which is uh, this time it's going to be separate from uh, the architecture entrance examination. So briefly, I would also give you uh, a little glimpse of the planning course as well. So this, as you can see, this is the welcome walk in a way of uh, the SPA Department of Architecture as you come into it. Right in front of you is the room where uh, the orientation program is going to be held. That's our auditorium. This is who you can expect to meet once you come here. So uh, amongst the, let's say, peculiarities of SPA New Delhi Department of Architecture is that uh, there is uh, very little that you can distinguish your seniors or your faculty by, by their mannerisms and by their personalities because you'll find that uh, most of them still are actually young or otherwise they are very, very young at heart and they like to stay young and uh, be with the students and be part of that student's family. So uh, that's, the, that's uh, what you see here are uh, some of the cartoons of the faculty and uh, they are very prominently displayed uh, at the... Uh, at the ground floor when you come up the stairs and uh, this is one of the games that we play here that uh, you know you are introduced to all these people by their cartoons and then you have to recognize them when you meet them so uh, this is the kind of uh, you know relationship this is the kind of uh, environment that you can expect to be in once you are at spa the faculty are uh, all are very distinguished uh, in academics and uh, in practice also. That is, that's, uh, that's, I would say, a distinguishing feature at SPA New Delhi is that uh, being in the city of Delhi and being right uh, at the seat of government, uh, the faculty at SPA is extremely uh, involved, very highly involved, engaged with the uh, uh, roles of research and roles of uh, uh, consultancy outside the school and uh, that keeps us on our toes, that keeps our powder dry, that keeps our uh, knives sharp, whatever you like to call it, but that keeps us on top of our profession and that keeps us in a position to give to our students the latest, the very best of whatever is happening in the world around us. So uh, you can, you can uh, you can get an idea of the faculty from these cartoons. This is, uh, especially for those who have absolutely no idea as of now about what happens in architecture school. This is, you can say, the crowning uh, moment of any semester when uh, we have uh, what is called, uh, you know, it's a very frightening word. What we have is a jury. It's an external jury. So we have uh, people coming from the profession, people coming from other schools to have a look at our work, uh, the work of the students. And of course it's our work because the faculty is also very uh, deeply engaged with the students and getting it all done. And uh, this is a picture, you can say the photo op at the end of the jury and uh, all the students' works you can see are in front. And uh, those are some of the jurors and some of the students back there. And uh, this is the grand jury of the final year, final semester, which is called the thesis. And uh, this is happening in our auditorium. This, these are the nuts and bolts. So to give an idea of uh, what goes on here, uh, we are the Institute of uh, National Importance. And uh, this is the reason why. So uh, first of all, we are uh, having these three opportunities at undergrad level. One is the Bachelor of Architecture, the other is the Bachelor of Planning. And then we have uh, to start from this session itself, an integrated Master of Planning course, which is 
that students coming into bachelor planning can straight away go on to do their masters and actually save a year in that process. On the other hand, you see a long list and that is what distinguishes SPA from uh, many other institutions. This is a compendium sort of uh, built over many, many years of uh, specializations which we have at SPA, which are opportunities after you have finished your architecture and uh, pod planning uh, graduation. These are all opportunities for further studies. Uh, so there is, we have architectural conservation, we have urban design, industrial design, building engineering and management, landscape architecture, and we have five specializations of planning itself. Now, uh, needless to say, all of these programs, SPA was the first institution to start in this country. And uh, over the time, we have uh, uh, not only gained a lot of experience and expertise in all these fields, but we have also provided for the entire country, not just professionals who practice all these disciplines, but we have also provided almost all the teachers uh, or rather teachers for all institutions uh, based on uh, the specializations that we teach here. Uh, so I would say it would be very rare to find uh, an architecture school in India where not even one faculty member has uh, touched SPA. Um, so uh, yeah, so that basically means that uh, this is in a way uh, where it's all at. So everyone just kind of at some point or the other touches SPA. So uh, in the Department of Architecture, we have uh, uh, a program of BRG, which is accredited by the Council of Architecture and uh, follows uh, all the minimum standards uh, which are pronounced by the Council. Uh, but more than that, we have a lot of uh, emphasis on things which the council does not prescribe. So uh, we have, for example, a very, very strong art uh, department, which is under a specialist art teacher, or rather I should say a specialist artist, uh, because uh, this is our belief that an architect has to have this very, very essential faculty of doing things artistically, doing things to provide beauty, doing things to give delight to people, because uh, that is what really draws people to architecture. You know, it's sensuousness, the way it delights our senses. So this is a discipline which most students, because they have opted for the science stream, they get disconnected with because uh, this is something, yes, in the early years in the school, you do do all kinds of art and sculpture and painting and so on. But once you get into the ninth, 10th, 11th and so on, all of these things, they get forgotten. And then finally, for the entrance exam, yes, you have to again brush up your sketching. But that's only sketching. What we are trying to say here is that the artist must be in equal measure, or rather the architect must in equal measure be an artist as much as the architect will be a technologist or a scientist. So you can learn all the science, you can learn all the techniques, but you would be incomplete if you did not learn the arts. So we have a great emphasis on arts, on the liberal arts, which are humanities, and uh, we spend a lot of time on that, much, much more than uh, most other institutions. And we have also a very systematized professional training regime by which we send out our students to specific areas, to specific professionals, and expect them to learn specific skills while they are there. And uh, this is something which every architecture school will do. Uh, but we just do it a little more rigorously and it accounts for a lot of your final credits. In the last semester, of course, you will do a thesis. This is uh, a view of a typical studio. 
you can see all the drawn faces very tired looking faces so this is the penultimate day of the jury when uh, you know the work is just about finished and they'll go home probably get an uneasy sleep and uh, next day they have to appear for the exam so uh, the this is uh, this is a model of a uh, of a place a site which the students uh, have made in which all the existing buildings are shown and then uh, in the middle you see there is a slot which is empty a hole in there in which everybody's designs will be placed and uh, the jury will be able to see the designs not just as buildings by themselves but uh, as buildings in the surroundings of other buildings in the context as we call it so uh, this uh, this is the way most of the semesters the studio of design is carried out the design uh, subject actually happens in a system and in a place which is called the studio so it's really a place where you work while you are learning and uh, the idea of being together in a studio is not just to listen to the teacher one way but to actually interact with the teacher and uh, sometimes uh, it's also true it's that the teacher also learns a lot from the students many things the students come up with with the teachers have not thought or have thought in the way they thought 20 years ago when they were learning this is a very very important fact so most people remember their own college days and they think that everything is still the same but uh, it's the students who kind of uh, poke you and say hey now things are not like that so maybe we need to think differently the the place which you see here is uh, in this particular case is a fortress it's a fort in bharatpur in rajasthan and that again is a very important feature of how our uh, uh, our pedagogic method how our teaching goes on is that in every semester every class and that really means every student goes out on a field trip and that on that field trip they not only see new things they see new places including historic places and uh, sometimes they measure out the historic places sometimes they measure out the not so historic but real living places but the idea is to engage very very closely with these environments uh, study them understand them and then come back and then design for those environments so in this way we ensure that our students get a lot of exposure we go far and wide in the first year we go uh, close to delhi and as we go further we go further and further away from delhi in a way that you know over a over a 10 year span you could say that the students of spa have covered every corner of the country this is a little bit about b planning the b planning course is a four year course and uh, again spa was the first institution to start an undergraduate program in planning it's very intensive and uh, the reason for putting it in place was that the masters program was uh, really not enough to do so many things that we need to do in planning and uh, that's why this entire four years is taken up it also includes a practical training component and now from this year we'll be introducing a continued dual degree program in which you can do a b plan at the end of 4 years you get your b plan degree and at the end of 5 years you get your m plan degree as well so this is something which uh, you can also consider it's also a very good option for all of you we have a uh, uh, lot of activity of research which goes on uh, in many ways uh, lots of things again spa has been the first to start it's been there for so long so obviously it has to be doing everything first there is uh, there are what we call apart from the departments we have got uh, these centers which are uh, specifically for purposes and sometimes uh, these are opened with grants from which we receive from the various government institutions and sometimes from corporates also 
And uh, the latest that we have, which is uh, open two years ago, three years ago, is uh, the Design Innovation Center, which is uh, really about interdisciplinary and intersectoral uh, research and uh, outreach and innovation in which uh, students propose their own projects that uh, this is what they would like to do. So first of all, we have an ideas competition and out of those ideas, we select some ideas which we can take forward. And then uh, we have a program in which uh, the students get the funding uh, to uh, be engaged in those programs and to come out with a product ultimately, which has to uh, be tested. And finally, it has to be marketed. So somebody has to be able to buy it. So if it's not good, nobody will buy. And ultimately, that's the proof of the pudding. So uh, cutting all the clutter aside, we have just put that. Uh, the DIC, uh, let's say, objective is to take uh, design innovation to the market, out to the people. So this is also a very important activity of the SPA New Delhi. SPA New Delhi is the hub of uh, one of the hubs of the Design Innovation Center program of the Ministry of Human Resource Development. And the other two SPAs are our spokes. They are, are uh, parts of our, uh, let's say, hub. And uh, they work along with SPA New Delhi. So this was all about the academics which goes on. I have given you an idea of the BH program, what all happens there, about the B plan programs, and a little bit about the research part which happens. We have a PhD program, and uh, all uh, departments have PhD scholars, and increasingly more and more PhD scholars are coming out of SPA, which brings us brings me to the third part of this, which I had called the fundamics. Now, why I coined that word is because this entire academics which happens in SPA New Delhi, I would say accounts for just about 50% of what goes on and what you have to learn from. So as an opportunity to learn the classroom, and the activities of the studio and uh, the field trips, all of which are academic activities, essentially, even the Design Innovation Center, uh, they are, in a way, just 50% of the experience that you are going to have in New Delhi SBA. The other part is the fundemic. Now, fundemic is for two reasons. One, of course, is that it is fun. The second is that it is fundamental. So our belief is that before you become a great architect or a great planner or a great researcher, the important thing is to become a good human being. So there is a lot of right, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, importance, emphasis riding on your becoming an all around good personality. And that means we give you opportunities to do lots of things outside the classroom. Uh, we have our timetable, weekly timetable, arranged in such a way that you get at least two afternoons to do things which are not classroom activities. And this is even while we keep the, uh, the required hours as per all the regulations of the university, of the ministry, of the council, uh, keeping all those regulations, we still uh, find the time, or rather we make the time on two afternoons to keep you free of classrooms. And that is some, it's like very religiously done. You know, we can, we can give away anything, but uh, neither the teachers nor the students would want to give away the two free afternoons. And in these afternoons, we do lots of things. Like you see what is happening here, there's something uh, the students which have uh, they have made it and then they, there's a little game which is going on in it and uh, so there is an activity in which you learn about architecture and then you engage with the thing which you have made in a way that you you get to know it intimately because architecture is not something which only one person can do everything so it is a teamwork 
And the important thing is how to work as a team member and yet have the full fun. So it's like you're playing game of football. I mean, you're just the goalkeeper. You have you're just sitting at the back and waiting for the ball to come because your team is so good. You know, it's attacking the opposition goal, and all the forwards are having all the fun. So how does the goalkeeper have the fun? That is something which we are very very keen that our students must learn. And for that, we have these fundamics, which are basically fun activities which do not appear to be academic activities, but actually are just as important. And they are fundamentally very, very important for any person who's going to be an architect. So this is something which is happening in our open air theater. So yes, one group of students has, uh, as part of their uh, art class, have uh, come and painted the center of it. Again, it's not something one student can do. So how do you actually plan to do all this? Uh, because it's all time. You have to do it in a three-hour studio. So uh, every team has to kind of do their working out before and then they just have to come and do it. And then there's another set of students who are sitting out there and they will, they're probably sketching out here. So uh, this is again a part of our pandemic. Yes, so... The it is in a way it is art, but it's also teamwork, and that is the fun part of it. The fundamic then goes on to something else, and which is the development of your hobbies. This is something again we are very, very keen on, and we have in SPN New Delhi uh, numerous societies, uh, 14 at this point of time where uh, students can indulge the, in their hobbies. They can meet uh, students from uh, across the years. The, the first year students can meet people of similar interests who may be there in the senior years. And the senior years are always uh, looking out for uh, new, fresh talents, uh, which can actually invigorate their particular society. So you have here three societies uh, pictures. One is the photography society, which is obvious. The second is the installation society. The third is the Western music society. We have an Indian music society. We have a theater society. We have a society for movie making. We have a society for blog writing. Uh, we even have a society for cycling, which incidentally, uh, you know, is, uh, is something which even our alumni after they leave, the school, they, they are very interested in participating in these societies. Let me tell you, these societies are uh, things which you can join by choice. And if you find that there is something which is not there, even you can start your own new society. That is the kind of freedom you have here. If there is something new and you can collect a few people of like mind, you can start your own society. That's how the cycling society started because uh, it really wasn't there before and one of our alumni uh, on one of his visits to uh, the school just moved, floated that idea and within 15 minutes he got so many people saying that oh we love cycling too but there's not no society like that so <laughs> so it was like oh but why don't you start it and soon enough just in one day a new society was started because somebody through a great idea. So our, our purpose is always to get students, to get their minds racing, and uh, finally to get ownership of their thoughts. That's the important part. This is, again, part of the pandemics. This is, uh, this, their students are preparing for a festival, and uh, this got converted into a construction exercise and then uh, it earned them grades as well. So it's, it, we really don't know. Was it for academics? Was it for fun? Uh, all we know is that fundamentally it helps the student learn something, which even if they didn't learn it in the classroom, this they would surely have learned by participating in the activity. And then of course, the, the drama, the dance, uh, the, the fashion shows, 
all of these happen and uh, they happen uh, twice a year in uh, both semesters once uh, every time they happen in both semesters this uh, is now we are coming out of the fundamics and now i am coming to something which i have called random mix random mix and that is also a word purposely coined uh, because again here is something which we are extremely proud of and that is that we have an uncompromisingly national character so we are a school it's an all india school uh, we admit students from all over the country and uh, they come here carrying with them their uh, backgrounds their ways of doing things their culture their food their way of dressing and their festivals so this is a view of the courtyard of our hostel and uh, this is uh, something which is happening on the morning of a festival and this will be followed by a feast so all festivals uh, are celebrated very really with lot of enthusiasm in in our hostel and in the college also and in that sense uh, we we really uh, stress on this aspect that you know we have to share we have to be with each other we have to be for each other and we have to be united as indians so the the atmosphere in the school uh, affords this because uh, just as we have students from everywhere we also have teachers from everywhere and uh, the same kind of spirit happens in the faculty as well and then it's transmitted to the students so uh, yeah we are a random mix from all over the country and we are very very proud of that this is uh, this is what happens after you leave the school so once you leave the school you become part of a very uh, i would say a very uh, tightly knit a very strong body which is called the spa alumni which is uh, uh, which is spread all over the world and uh, it is if you carry the spa tag with you the uh, carry the spa name with you you will have doors opening for you in the most unexpected places because our alumnus can be found in the united nations they can be found in working for governments in africa they can be found working with the real estate investment trusts they can be found with venture capitalists they can be found in the niti aayog all over the place you will have spa alumni graduates from the department of architecture from the department of architecture mind you in all these different places so uh, you can question what in all these places what are they doing they can't be building buildings all the time no they don't build any buildings at all they actually advise people so the important thing which i would like to stress here which i mentioned right in the beginning that a career in architecture and uh, cannot be equated to just having an architectural design office where you sit and make designs of buildings for other people there is a whole wide world out there and there is much much more to do many many more important things which our alumni are doing and of course one very important thing which alum alumni are also doing is that they are coming back to school so whenever there there is something new which they learn then they are very eager to share it back with the students of the school so this is an outcome what you see in this picture is an outcome of a workshop which our alumni have done uh, with the students of the school and it's a parametric design workshop but apart from the collaboration between alumni and the students what we see here is a very important connection which is which is between industry and the school so what you see here are very uh, purpose made tiles which have been made by a very prominent tile company and purely because of the networking that the school's alumni are capable of 
So uh, this does not get counted, you know, when you are when you are really thinking of academics. But this is so important. And then, lastly, because I said we are so old, so I also have to tell you what we have been doing with our age. Well. Uh, in the last uh, three years, we completed the Platinum Jubilee, that's 75 years of the Department of Architecture. And closely followed by that, uh, we did the Diamond Jubilee, that's the 60 years of the combined entity, the School of Planning and Architecture. So they kind of two celebrations flowed into one another. And we had a, we had a number of events in which uh, the city's people participated, apart from the students and the architects and the alumni and uh, very, very exciting two years. Unfortunately, it was to come to an end in such a way as COVID. And uh, we really have not done the closing ceremony of all these celebrations. So I may have overshot my time uh, and thank you very much for your patience. Thank you, sir, for the wonderful presentation. It is truly an honor to have you join us today on this platform and share your views. Thank you once again. My pleasure. So the next institution joining us is RVS Chennai Padmavati School of Architecture. RVS Chennai Padmavati School of Architecture is a young and dynamic school which believes in experimental learning as its foundation and focuses on providing national and international exposure to its students. RVS Chennai strives to be an innovative and futuristic school, constantly pushing boundaries through new ways of teaching. Joining us, we have architect Reeves Antony, the academic innovator of RVS Chennai, is a young and passionate architect with experience in varied fields through his career. His ideas and approach to education sets the tone for the institute and its students. For college-related information and queries, kindly make note of the details provided on screen. I invite architect Reeves Anthony to present RVS Chennai. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thanks a lot. Um, a very good evening to you all the young aspirants who are going to be future architects. It's really exciting to see the kind of energy you guys have to be a part of an event like this. It shows your passion towards the field. Um, I would definitely like to thank uh, for calling me on this panel. It's a big honor and a privilege to be talking with so many pioneers and renowned academicians who have definitely done a lot. And Manoj, it was really a very interesting presentation. Thanks a lot for that. Um, I would like to start talking about what we do in RVS Chennai. RVS Chennai, also known as the Alternative School of Architecture, strives to change the approach in the field of architectural education. Our vision is constructed over five strong pillars, which provides a holistic learning experience for our students, focusing on research, skill development, hands-on learning through application. Each of our pillar has one main focus alongside giving a large experience to the students. I would like to start talking about the first and the most important pillar. We call this pillar the School of Change. The School of Change advocates strong academics that focuses on innovation and maximum exposure to its students. In RVS, we treat the five-year program, which is broken down into 10 semesters. Two semesters are always clubbed together and we imagine them and treat them as one single year with a holistic theme and approach thereby enhancing the overall understanding of students in diverse fields. The year one, the foundation program focuses on the ideology of art, culture, and heritage. This foundation year is extremely important for the students' understanding of architecture. The most important feature of this program is the travel studios. A theme-based travel to various Tamil landscapes creates a unique experience for the students. They understand and experience new places, cultures, and other forms of art as well. 
this first travel is an integral part of rvs culture and we believe it will open up our minds and shape the visions of these young minds and we believe travel is a way to learn things and take things forward this is an example of marudam the crop lands that were seen so we had gone through various different kinds of lands and our students had traveled across year 2 and 3 are technical in its nature of approach the second year focuses on the theme of social and ecological resilience which drives the students towards understanding of our rural environment and importance of construction techniques and materials an important element that penetrates its way from the second year onwards is something we call the structures and services structures and services is an essential component of the academics like how a human body works with various different kinds of systems the building also works with various different kind of systems and services to make it efficient we believe that it is important for an architect to know about these structures and services consistently under the structures and services component students get to speak with professionals discuss with consultants they go to a lot of different site visits understand what new technology and what new materials are being proposed and put forward in the market with the consideration of doing an actual project and understand discuss and debate how to integrate these services into a building the year 3 the theme of year 3 is called technology and innovation we start treating our students as architects from third year onwards they start talking and interacting with professionals from the field we recently had a consultation day for our students where the teachers took the role of consultants and the students were treated as architects this opportunity gave the student to look at his design as a realistic one to be able to talk to the architects to be able to talk to his teachers frankly telling i want to build this this is how i want to be built and the faculties take the role of consultants trying to figure out a way to make it more realistic the students are taught here and trained to look at their designs as realistic as possible and approach it with an attitude that it is going to be built this instills a lot of confidence in these young minds year 4 has the theme of urban planning and renewal urban planning and renewal is a year where students engage in communication with the city in they have grown up with in the city they are studying about the senior year focuses on development of the city and is research centric we have launched quite a few research projects for which our students have contributed in very interesting and exciting manners which we will be talking about year 5 as per the university syllabus 6 months is given for internship to an architect's office and we believe the first 4 years of thematic approach helps the student to actually create a strong and a very beneficial portfolio and the last part of his final 5 year curriculum is the thesis thesis is something we call the dream project of a student moving on to one more important element in the academics is the scholarships that rvs is offer this is an additional encouragement to students across all the years in the rvs scholarship that gives cash prizes for deserving students from every batch we have instituted three scholarships under the name of three renowned architects charles korea award which is a 25000 rupees scholarship for the overall performance of the year a students performance not just in academics their creativity their innovation is all looked at and the overall performance award gives given to the student we have a lorry baker award which is a cash prize of rupees 5000 for the student with a maximum dedication throughout the year and a frank lloyd right award which is another 5000 rupees scholarship for the one who has really scored well and excelled in all the exams one more important character of rvs academics is the international reviews we believe it is important for students to have a global idea of architecture and in conducting this international review for our students students get to have a global perspective of their designs and discussed with acclaimed people on screen we can see architect ivar kranski who is the founder of edge architects in dubai and also architect george who is the dean of american university of sharjah in dubai both of them have visited our institution this happens at the end of every 6 months our students get to spend time with internationally renowned architects 3 to 4 days talking about their design they present and they discuss their design with the reviewers get their input on how to take things forward it widens their approach and vision of the students with an international background and more importantly it adds a lot of confidence into how their ideas can be shaped better and how the world works more details about these topics or these academics are available on our website now moving on to the second pillar which is one of our important and most strong pillars is the live project our students involve themselves in the real time construction of a socially and sustainably relevant project once every year which means one month a year they spend in actually building we believe that this exercise makes them grounded and makes them have a realistic understanding of the construction process 
there are two components to the live project one is the build proposal and the design proposal now how do you learn to actually build we can't just learn to build by sitting inside the studios if you want to learn how to build you should actually build with your hands that is the way forward that is how you will know how to build it now i'm going to be talking about two projects which we had done in the last 6 months due to the shortage of time the first project is under the build division it's called the senior citizens library at surat this building that you see is a senior citizens library that was built along in collaboration with oro university this building was entirely built by our students the they understand what it takes for a project to be converted from drawing to an actually constructed one the process is intense and it's time taking and it definitely teaches them the reality of construction i would like uh, to go to the earlier slide the before and after picture it clearly showcases how the site was in the first day we showed it and how we finished the project and came back this took one month for us but our students really enjoyed the entire process they understand what it takes and they also understand the intensity of the project they also interact with the laborers and gain an in depth knowledge of the entire process of construction we spent almost uh, 30 days at this site with the builders with the architects who had designed the project in building the project and taking it forward and there are uh, images of our students working from the foundation to the finishing our students were a part of the entire process the building was a complete exposed brick building and had a bamboo truss it was designed by an architect called vicky achani is a pass out of sept university these are some pictures for you to give an idea what the project was and how the students had worked on next yeah moving on to the next project is a design project abhi do stone build as a group we also design this is a project that was hosted by vivartana ventures an extension for the second phase of a billabong high school in the outskirts of chennai students second year students attended this competition and 10 of our students got lost shortlisted to present it the final jury was handled from dubai and chennai as well there were uh, the trusty owners from dubai and also contractors from chennai this culture established that these 10 students who were shortlisted became architects formed their own teams and then worked with their classmates as a team and emerged out with three winners three students getting a cash prize of 25000 15000 and 10000 from the company for giving out the best design and one of these design is going to be built very soonly as an extension of the billabong high school under the live project we have completed six projects until now in the past few years and more details about these projects are available on our website the next important integral part of live project is something we call the design cell along with building and designing in groups students also have the space to take up individual projects as well on their own students work on the projects with their seniors with their alumni and also with the guidance of mentors and faculties which is a very important aspect they start doing small projects as they are students and we encourage them to do it we also call a panel of eminent architects from the city to judge our students best work and award a cash prize of rupees 10000 at the end of the semester the concept behind having a design cell is that they should start to earn while they learn we believe that that will have a great shift in the way they look at academics in the way they approach life and also have a larger and holistic vision in life now the next pillar is something that we love and desire the most it's not just loved by my students it's also loved by all our faculties it's the summer winter school a travel experience to various parts to learn various skills crafts and technology from across the country national and international the idea of summer schools are to enhance the skills of the students in their own desired fields and also give them the opportunity to become an expert during these breaks summer winter schools happen during the breaks between the semesters it opens up the avenue for students to look learn and experience and then understand about their choices and their interests we have worked on various materials from brick rammed earth mud bamboo etc from mentors and experts across the country like singapore mumbai goa andabad to just name a few these summer winter schools are all focused towards learning from traveling as well every time a summer winter school happens the students get to travel to that particular city go visit the city for a few days understand the culture understand the experience because we believe there cannot be a better teacher than traveling traveling is a very important teacher for every student and what they learn from these travels is extremely crucial as well it's a fun filled learning exercise that has been a strength that has given a hand to all the students the summer winter school is like equipping themselves additionally with one more hand 
to know more details and that reflects strongly in their academic practices as well a summer school the schools are planned with experts in the field of architecture across the country to try and learn these skills from them and adapt them and use them in their designs we have had small summer winter schools on all these sustainable materials for the past 3 years and now with the advent of live projects we are actually getting into real time construction we have believe that we will be moving on to the other allied fields of architecture as well like fashion textile graphics also were summer winter schools for students to have a better perspective like how manoj sir just said it's not about just being an architect you have so many new avenues that you can jump and venture into as a part and as a consistent of this summer winter school we are launching the center for design and innovation in the city of chennai we have decided to create a space that exclusively is for these young minds to ideate think and develop new ideas to actually develop new working models prototypes and for the students to follow their heart and follow the passion this center for design and innovation is not just open for students of rvs alone it is open to students from across the entire country and this center we believe will be a great aspiration and inspiration to all now one is to x is a young dynamic team of architects from renowned universities with whom rvs chennai has collaborated in order to make these workshops more interesting and exciting one is to x is a young panel of young uh, architects the one is to x believes architects are those who take it in their hands to shape the world it is done through a rigorous collaborative process and to bring this knowledge to the doorstep of each and every budding designer one is to x uh, organizes unique learning experiences to provide an environment of innovation and creation i would like uh, you know uh, to share a small video that is a descriptive and shows an idea about what one is to x is all about or so that's a small snippet of what one is to x is all about and the concept of one is to x is to learn connect and innovate and be part of the unique tribe and we are extremely happy and proud to be able to collaborate with one is to x and bring this and bring this exposure of workshop and variety of learning to the students of tamil nadu now moving on to the fourth pillar which is a very interesting and a simple pillar is the vertical studio vertical studio is a student exchange program within the country to create an interesting experience to research and design research is an important point of being an architect and seeing a city through a new lens our last vertical studio was with two interesting institutions in the country with niti mangalore and azadi kochi the students from three cities traveled to the other institutions spent a week to 10 days there exploring the city and developing it the vertical studio focuses on research and design solutions for serious problems of the city students also learn how to work in a new team which directly improves their confidence to approach design and come up with quick solutions being just a one week exercise spontaneous thinking is a something that students require as a way forward and they come up with such innovative things to do the theme for last year's vertical studio was children friendly cities it was an assessment of whether cities are developing children friendly it was an interesting exercise that happened at the same time at three different cities of the country the four components of vertical studio are traveling to a new city looking at the places looking at how the place has evolved meeting new mentors pioneers working with new faculties and students and making new friends and also the concept of designing as a team all together is an entirely new learning experience under vertical studio we also have something called the institutional collaborations we have collaborated with institutions across the country 
not just architecture institutions, also design institutions and also across the globe. The reason for us to collaborate with design institutions like uh, Vijay Bhumi University uh, in Mumbai and Oro University Surat is for us to gain more exposure to our students in allied fields of design as well, like fashion and graphic that I mentioned earlier. Moving on to the fifth pillar, finishing school. An interesting venture that allows students to become industry ready. It's a holistic learning process and making them a practicing architecture student. This finishing school starts from the third year onwards. Students are given personal counseling to understand where their interest and where their scope lie and what they would like to do in their life in developing the unique skill sets for the students and making them practice ready. The important component of finishing school is the next generation softwares. We believe that it is important to be equipped technically for the future. And we focus on two softwares majorly as a mandate for all the students, building information modeling and geographic information system. These softwares are essential components for an architect of the future and definitely adds a lot of value and character to the student's portfolio and approach. We just not only teach these two softwares, we have collaborated with architect Sushant Verma, who's also on the panel with us in creating a one of a kind program on computational design in the country. I would kindly request architect Sushant Verma, who's joined us in the panel to share a few words about the program and the importance of computation design if possible. Yeah, hi, Reeves. thank you very much uh, for, for having me on the panel. Yeah, and, it's, it's always and, a pleasure. Yes, Sushant. Yeah, so, uh, so I just want to quickly talk about Smart Labs uh, very briefly. So that's one thing which we started. I want to tell you about why we started this. So when I was a student studying in India and uh, before I went for my master's at the AA in London, uh, we I realized that there is definitely a big lag of, uh, you know, right education and exposure of technology and design technologies, which is what I was very interested in. And uh, I remember like once I went for my master's, I realized that we Indians do not have the right kind of background, which is when uh, I, uh, I had already kind of started to develop an idea that the, the moment we get back to India, we have to kind of create a system which allows students to give them a right exposure about what typically happens in an advanced master's program. And that is how the vision of Smart Lab started. And then uh, I was in London for four years, worked with Zaha, worked with a robotics company, moved to Los Angeles and uh, moved back to India in 2015 to set up uh, uh, the Rat Lab studio in Delhi, which is what I, I run. Uh, with that, we started to do a lot of workshops. Now over almost 70, 80 workshops, catering to around 2000 plus students in the last five years. We started the Smart Labs program as, a, as an avenue that how can we bring in the global education in India to for the Indian students. And it was a hybrid program started four years back. When I say hybrid, it's a blend of studio learning and, uh, uh, and online learning. Now, online learning is something which most of us are familiar with now because that's something that, uh, you know, I would say uh, with the pandemic, we have started to adapt to. However, that's something that we started like about four years back and started to test that out, which was quite successful because we could have studios and facilitated by online learning where we could have, you know, the pioneers of computational design join us as a part of the mentors and tutors for this program. I hope my screen is visible. I'm just going to brush through uh, a few modules. Reeves, is my screen visible? Is my screen visible, Reeves? Can you just confirm? Yes, sir, we are yes, able yes, to. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, cool, cool, perfect, thanks. Uh, right, so so, so it, in, in its fourth year now, Smart Labs caters to a group of students who are currently studying or working anywhere in India and they can apply for this program. And we are typically looking into three modules. Uh, a very uh, you know distinct pedagogy is what we have kind of created. Uh, so with the workshop culture, we are trying to bring in a studio exercises and three modules of digital fabrication, interactive design, and performative design based on students' interest. At the end, we have this uh, very exciting public exhibition where students get to showcase their works uh, as prototypes, exhibits, installations of various kinds. Uh, These are some glimpses from the, the, the last studio. Uh, we also delve into uh, virtual reality and augmented reality to allow people to understand technology from a different perspective, how design technologies can, can be used not only for manifestation of spa uh, a space, but also for a digital space as well and how to visualize that. 
and uh, the students kind of turn up uh, to a surprise pretty smarter than what we initially thought they end up developing their own inventions and new tools and techniques and methodologies of design for example in this visual that you can see uh, there's one of our student who's using the motion of his hand and using a leap motion sensor to be able to control a surface inside a 3d three dimensional space so that's something which is kind of bringing in novelty and innovation and which is what smart lab studio is all about how to train students to learn to innovate and have design thinking uh, you know as, as, a, as a subject and then of course students test out their installations uh, we, we provide the space and the material and the fabrication facilities uh, and rvs has been very generous in uh, you know supporting the program right from its beginning uh, and then students really get into developing their thesis within the program it's more like a you know uh, you know compressed research of the areas of interest somebody interested in in making facades or developing uh, filling the voids of an urban space these are all students work students work that i'm kind of showing right now they end up using computational design or parametric design or design technologies rather uh, in their own ways of interest somebody like who's a second year student or a third year student being a part of smart labs develops his or her ideas in a different manner and a professional with 3 years of experience develop their own idea but at the end the most beautiful thing in the pro in the studio is the collaboration that happens within the students within the batch which has led to some very interesting innovations and inventions and the students right now are working in uh you know uh, different firms across india or teaching in various institutions running their own workshops and programs with all of it we we support and many of them are uh, you know doing their masters in different countries and we are still in touch with them to kind of maintain this community this is the graduation from last batch of smart labs uh so yeah i mean the, the whole idea and the vision is to uh you know kind of inculcate design technology knowledge uh to design students which is kind of open to all so anybody from any part of india studying anywhere can actually be a part of this program it's a fully open program uh which we run uh, with the help and support of smart labs and we have six studios 12 online sessions and this year with with the uh, when you know with covid situation we are planning to bring in more online sessions because people have acclimatized to online learning bring in more advanced toolkits and tool sets and tutors into the place so it's not necessarily restricted to you know merely grasshopper or or rhino which typically people learn in india now uh it's extended to you know things like blender arduino uh, houdini zbrush and all sorts of computational uh, you know uh, languages which people uh, use in advanced architectural design studios so uh, so yeah i mean it's a continuing program and fourth year hopefully becomes much more innovative with, yeah, with thank you Sujan, thank you so much spending your time off to you know give us a brief about it we definitely believe that in rvs it's important for us to be you know a little futuristic and innovative in our approach so thanks sushant thank you for the you know thank you for dropping in and giving us a brief i think it it is always better when you talk about parametrics and you talk about you know the next in software so thank you um so continuing with the finishing school we had so continuing back to the finishing school we just saw about next generation softwares and it was an insightful presentation by sushant into what parametrics and computational design can do um the next level of importance goes to the environment this green building certification is an important component because the future pushes us all to be sustainable in every aspect and we at rvs look at it as a mandate for our students to be trained and taught and be concerned about that particular aspect of the environment we enhance the students portfolio by making all these students green building certified architect uh, architects in their own fields and interest it's important for them to be certified i think with the rise of the pandemic we all know how important it is for us to approach and be sensible towards the environment and therefore every student who's passing out of rbs we will take that responsibility to make sure that they are green building certified and that they have the exposure to treat and respect the environment and build responsibly another important criteria or and characteristics of our finishing school is the language and personality we teach national and international languages to our students as part of their curriculum itself which gives the students a lot of confidence to travel and also to work students travel across the country to work for internships and various other opportunities and language always has been a barrier for them to be confident 
in order to remove that barrier we at rvs have taken this initiative to make sure we teach them new languages national and international languages and make them more confident because languages are very important and a crucial element for any student to approach life goal another important criteria of the finishing school is the placement assistance to follow your heart we believe it is important to have the right guidance and attitude and we have taken it upon ourselves to create a placement cell to benefit not just for the students of rvs just like how the smart lab is open to all this placement assistance this placement cell is also open to any student who wants to have a nice career in architectural profession we are also collaborated with architect shubhanshu singh who is a graduate from spa bhopal i request architect shubhanshu to please come on video to just share a few words about placement cell since he is an expert in it and rvs and shubhanshu are working together shubhanshu are you online are you on the yes. video yeah thank you very much and thank you for having me here yeah it's always a pleasure shubhanshu please so there has been always a question when the new student join college is there a placement kya hamara placement hoga so in a simple answer if i say is there a placement in architecture no because we never needed it and it was because the, till now there was no shortage of jobs there were many few students there were uh, uh, many few firms and the alumni relationship in architecture works very well plus the concentration the jobs were concentrated over a small region so it was not hard to find jobs but the situation is not changing that we move us to our next question that why do we need placements in architecture right now so the very first should be need placement cells in architecture that there are highest number of players ever there are more students graduating every year there are more number of firms and the insecurity of job when a student they leave the college it is very important to give him a free assured job it not only makes up their uh, it not only makes up their boost their morale and the third point uh, some firms they have over application some firms get very less application so it was like because there is very bad institute and the industrial bonding and the core reason is that wide spread community of architecture across the india now they are forms in small cities and they also want very good uh, applications to them which are generally concentrated to the uh, to the tire city and the final why don't if everyone is having placement culture in their field engineers have management guys have then why don't we have so here we have our initiative as placement cell at rbs chennai that which i believe is the first kind of in tamil nadu so it's like we first select our students segregate them according to their interest and all second we approach the firm according to their needs and finally we provide them the opportunity of the placement i am very excited and looking forward for this place thank you thank you thank you shubhanshu and uh, shubhanshu is a graduate of spa bhopal like i said and we are working towards launching this okay. placement cell no which shubhanshu and we are working towards it the placement cell is going to be launched within less than a month and it is going to open up new avenues new job opportunities and create new spaces for architects to be treated as well thanks a lot shubhanshu for sharing you know spending time with us and sharing your insight thanks a lot thank you too thank you too now moving on i have right now discussed everything about the five pillars and the last thing is about the firm collaborations we are collaborated with various firms nationally and internationally because we believe these firms can guide us in the right directions they will be helping our students mentoring them and taking them through a lot of different avenues of architecture helping us in placement and getting us collaborated as well the firm collaborations are not just restricted within the state of tamil nadu it's restricted it's for the entire india and also we have international connections as well now i have explained about all the five pillars we have done with it. as you all know rvs chennai padmavathi school of architecture is affiliated to anna university chennai and approved by the council of architecture delhi the same syllabus has been reinterpreted in a way the same syllabus given to us by anna university has been reinterpreted in a way that these five pillars that i spoke about are intertwined with this five year program for a student this road map here clearly showcases the journey of a student while he enters the college and until he comes out as a successful and a responsible and an intellectual architect we have seen the five pillars and how it intertwines with academics just to give you a brief about this road map when a student joins rvs the first thing he does is something that i said earlier that the travel studio the first journey is very important and at the end of the first year where he seen a lot of different cultures he goes on to an international tour to get a global exposure 
from the second year onwards he starts getting introduced to building through the live project and from the second year also he starts having parallel affiliations in graphics in textiles in furniture designs with our collaboration with other design universities in the third year he starts becoming very aware about the vertical studios and the inter student exchange program that happens in the fourth year we want to make sure that the students are all green building certified architects become more responsible and become more aware and also while they're doing their urban design they are taught the next generation softwares like gis and bim as a mandate and in the fifth year they are molded through this finishing school pillar the fifth pillar and they come out as extremely reasonable and successful architects knowing what they want to do in their life we believe that that is very 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 important for a student to be able to do and the final part of this entire five year plan is this rvs guarantee something that we always love to say you know we want to give this guarantee to people we believe that every student of rvs will be given this experience these facilities and these promises as they become a part of our culture we are a only 40 student intake batch and we guarantee this to all the students who are participating to be a confident and a responsible architect four live projects where they actually get to build three vertical studios of student exchange programs two summer winter schools one international tour learning the next generation necessary softwares becoming a green building certified architects getting the right placement assistance not just to be an architect but to follow your heart and follow your dream and passion and finally learning the necessary languages and having the personality and the character development which gives us the immense confidence so that is all the presentation that i would like to share with these young minds about i would like to also convey my best wishes and all the best to all these students who are going to be attending the nata examination we welcome you to the architecture fraternity on behalf of you know the architecture family i would say because we are all teaching and uh, you know we would like to see it um i know that the situation the pandemic has definitely uh, taken a toll on every field uh, is the screen sharing stop yes, yes sir, sir. thank you i think you can see me on video guy okay? right we can yeah okay thank you yeah. so uh, i would like to say that in this pandemic has definitely taken a toll on every field not just architecture i don't think students should be worried or be concerned about the future because like manoj sir said and like all the academicians they're going to say there is always a scope for this field it's always going to be creative and the council of architecture has also been very supportive and encouraging during this pandemic so i would like to instill this uh, sense of hope in all your minds and i once again welcome all these young aspirants who are going to be architects soon to the architecture fraternity thanks a lot for this opportunity thank you thank you sir for an eye opening presentation uh, your vision and ideas are truly an inspiration thank you thank you so the next institution joining us is uh, jindal uh, school of Ar art and architecture delhi the bachelor of architecture program at the jindal school of art and architecture jsa is a five year program the unique program at jsa is divided into two parts the major and the minor In the major, you learn about material making and about design thinking. The major also allows you to participate in exchange studies and collaborative works with students from some of the best schools in architecture. The program places you in multiple internships at leading firms where you gain work experience. From JSWA joining us, we have Professor Dr. Jaydeep Chatterjee, Professor and Vice Dean. Dr. Jaydeep Chatterjee is an architect and historian. and an anthropologist with a doctorate in the history of architecture urbanism and socio cultural anthropology from cornell university dr jaydeep's academic thinking wonder questions of design visual culture social formation of expertise popular culture and nationalism dr jaydeep has taught at several universities including cornell the university of cincinnati and the university school of architecture and planning delhi Jadeep also actively uh, collaborates with designers, architects, artists and film makers to work on many interdisciplinary projects. For any questions and queries regarding the college and this webinar, please take a note of the details of the college provided on screen. Right. Um thank you. Uh, am I Yes sir. All right. 
Um, yes, you can go and uh, share thoughts. Yes, sir. thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, firstly, thank you all for organizing this. I really think it's a wonderful, wonderful thing which you're doing, uh, creating a platform uh, for students to look at the many, many uh, wonderful um, opportunities that are there for a program in architecture. So kudos for that. This is a one of a kind thing and, and um, really, really glad to be a part of this. Um, to all the students who are here, uh, thank you for coming. Um, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure you all are kind of going through what's called a bit of a webinar fatigue. So uh, I'm going to try and keep it as short as I can. Um, so bear with me, all right? Um, all right, so I'm going to just share my screen and hopefully we can go get right started. Okay, um, all right, excellent. Uh, all right, wonderful. All right, so the Jindal School of Art and Architecture um, like the school before us, our RVS, we too are an extremely new school, right? Uh, we started in 2018 and with a very simple idea, right? Um, to become one of the foremost centers of learning that will produce a paradigmatic shift in the making and the discourse about the built environment. As you will notice, I would keep using the term built environment a lot more than the term architecture. And you will realize very soon why I'm doing that, right? <clears throat> cool. There are actually four ideals which guide our school. Number one, we are, we are a school which understands that knowledge is always in the making. Right? What that means is that you're not that knowledge is not a habeas corpus. Right? It's not like a body. Right, which is essentially makes knowledge into a kind of a dead body at times, right? Uh, but that knowledge always happens when you are in the process of making. And through the process of making is how you learn and new knowledge gets formed. Right? That's one of our first ideals. The second ideal is that we realize that people who come in, right, wherever you're coming in from, whichever, you know, cultural, ethnic, social background, cultural background that you come from, we all have our own ways of learning, right? We have our own pace of learning. We have our own interests that we want to really pursue. Then why do we have a one size fits all kind of a situation, right? So one of the things that you'll, as you'll see as we go through the presentation, it will be the how Jindal actually allows you to design your own curriculum completely, right? Okay. Um, the third pillar that is very, very important for us and third ideal, so to speak, is to really go beyond a kind of a binary thinking, right? So binaries between practice and theory, or is it a business or is architecture or, the, or, or, or being or making our environments, is that a business or is that a critical practice? Um, is, is building our cities, is it an act of thinking or is it an act of doing, right? These are all sort of very funny binaries. And what our school wants to do is really get beyond all of that, right? Um, you know, uh, and finally, number four is to understand that learning and producing knowledge um, only happens when student and faculty collaborate as peers, right? Um, as active agents working together on a project, right? Uh, and, and I'll explain some of this in, in a greater detail as we keep moving on. Right. So how do these four things really translate themselves? Right. Um, let me start from the first one. Right. So it starts from the idea that you learn from your con context. Right. And we believe um, that the city where we are, any city, any built environment that we are a part of is actually a workshop. Right. And you see here a very interesting quote by Hans Monderman who says, I want traffic behavior. I don't want traffic behavior. I want social behavior. And another wonderful quote by Jan Gell, who says, first life, then spaces, then buildings. The other way around never really works, right? So what does this really mean? It's interesting to hear the earlier college talk about life projects. It's, it's fascinating. So, so one of the things that we are doing is actually, uh, it's just not that you do your studio and then you do life projects. All our ateliers are life projects, right? So from, from, from the first year that you come in, you actually work on projects, right? Um, so what you see here are actually our first year students, 
Um, this is what they were doing in their spring semester. Um, they were working with a, uh, on, your, on the right side of your screen, you see uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kanna, who is actually heading a uh, not-for-profit organization in Delhi uh, called Koshish. And they have this little community center where uh, little girls uh, and young girls from an economically weaker section um, of the of, of Kalkaji would come and and sort of get, gain some special skills. But this building, an old NDMC New Delhi Municipal Corporation building, was in an extremely bad stage. So what we went in, and this is our first year students. Uh, throughout our uh, our spring semester, we actually redesigned. We we did what's called a forensic analysis of the building. We figured out what was wrong with it. Uh, we fixed all the services. We redesigned their spaces. Uh, we repainted their buildings and uh, turned their outside spaces into classrooms and places that they could play and learn. Okay, uh, what you see here is another. Um, project, another studio, essentially a live project. Uh, this is um, also something our present first year students were working on. Uh, this was a Katkatha studio. It was a puppet studio. Anuradha is, you know, who you see on the left hand side. Uh, she was our client in this case, right? And uh, she wanted this place redesigned and remade. Um, that's essentially what we did for four months, right? All throughout our, uh, our semester. We sat there, we designed, uh, we remade her studio. Uh, her, her, uh, what you see here is also our, what, something that our second year um, students worked on. Um, this is actually an interesting building, one of, the, one of India's first sort of LEED certified buildings made by a very prominent architect called uh, Mr. Ashok Lal. And what we did was we worked with Ashok and um, we said, okay, uh, damn good job, Professor Lal, but how can we actually reduce the energy consumption of this building even more? Um, and what our students did was actually sort of redesign uh, parts of the building and, and change the skin of the building and, and show how we could further actually reduce en energy consumption. So what you see here is basically um, a second year um, work, right? And in fact, what's interesting is our ateliers are not, uh, are very unusual in the sense they are not typologically based. So they're not like you, you know, uh, where you do a, a small residence and then you do something else. So you, uh, and then you move on to, and you finally go on to an urban studio. That's not really how our ateliers work. Um, I'll talk a bit about that, but just to tell you, our ateliers are actually based on something, uh, a very interesting idea proposed by a theorist called Frank Duffy, where what Duffy said was this, that every part of the built environment will have six layers to it. It'll have a skin, It'll have stuff, it'll have space layout, it'll have structure, it'll have site, and it'll have services. So essentially, our ateliers are those six ateliers that you do, right? Um, so you look at the question of service as it happens from the urban scale to the most intimate scale. You look at the question of form or structure as it happens from the most intimate to the most, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of the broadest scale, right? Okay. Um, the second idea which we said is, you know, learning while you're doing. Um, the idea is that you, you, you never learn, and you know, I, I think uh, Anthony was speaking before me, said that quite wonderfully. He said, you never learn something till you don't really make them. And, and the idea is, and that's not only true for all the, for the atelier works that you're doing at the JSA. In fact, every subject, um, you basically make things and learn, right? Uh, so let's take something for like construction. Right? Um, our students actually begin with an act of deconstructing things uh, in order to learn how to construct and, and then reconstruct them. I don't know if you guys have ever watched um, what are called these restoration videos on YouTube. If you haven't, you should go and look at it. But I'll give you an idea of what we do. This is a video made by one of our students on how they learn how is a chair constructed, right? So that's
All right. So the idea is that, that students actually use multiple forms of representation um, to talk about what they're doing. So sometimes they do make films, but also they do what are called DIYs, right? De do it yourself kind of drawings. But in each case, the idea is that you make something, you learn how to communicate and you uh, communicate it using multiple sort of uh, media, right? And, and, and sort of learning how to work with your hands. So you take apart a thing in order to learn how to make it, right? Um, um, we talked about, uh, you know, going on with this idea of uh, knowledge uh, being in the making, right? Um, so we've actually kind of done away with all kinds of, um, you know, textual learning in a sense, in a sense, although there's a lot of textual learning, but, but really learning some things in a formulaic way. So even something like structures, actually, we don't really teach them, teach our students through equations, right? Um, we teach them through this idea that we call make improvised design, right? So uh, here's a student, what you see is that she's learning how to do, uh, how to understand forces that work, you know, with the wind pressure, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, uh, shear force, whether it is structural damage that can happen to something. So the idea, so this is an interesting exercise, you know, what they had to do was drop an egg from about a 10 meter high around the structure, right? And if the structure and the egg survived the fall, you passed. So that's what you see happening in front of you. Right? Perfect. Right? So the idea is to just do things and, and do experiments con continuously and, and learn through them, right? So, you know, when they learn about shear force, they don't actually just learn equations. They actually make, make these little, what are called spaghetti buildings. And then we put them on what's called a shaking surface and we, we measure them, right? We see how that happens. So it's a lot of hands-on kind of learning. Um, but this is something we are, we are actually the most proud of, uh, which I said right at the beginning that, uh, you know, the idea is very simple. Why, why, when we all are such individuals and we talk about so much of individuality, do we still actually have coursework, which everybody has to learn the same, the same thing, but not so much at, at JSAA. Um, at the JSAA, um, the, the, the idea is that you can basically um, design your own curriculum, right? That's number one. But also it's a recognition of the fact that, you know, when, when all of you who are coming into the, into the discipline of architecture today, um, you're going to hit your peak about 10 to 15 years from now, right? So you're actually going to be working on problems that we have no ideas about with tools that we have no ideas about. But yeah, how do we prepare you? Well, one of the ideas has come out of what's called a T-shaped graduate. Uh, this is a wonderful uh, book written by a friend of mine called Shoikoth, who actually teaches at Ashoka. So one of the things that Shoikoth writes about is that what we need as graduates of the future are some people called T-shaped graduates. What does that mean? What that means is that the vertical arm of the T is your base area, right? That's something that you're majoring in. So, you know, it could be architecture, it could be design, it could be you know, fashion, it could be communication, it could be a lot of things. But that is not going to cut it anymore, right? More and more, what we are realizing is this, that the world, that the problems of the world don't come with a discipline attached to it, right? What they come are, they're just interesting problems in which many people from across disciplines have to come together. But to, a, to be able to do so, they have to be able to talk to each other, right? So what we do is, and we're perhaps the only place that does it, is that we offer you what's called a minor study of program in which you do about 24 to 4, uh, 32 credits, right? So there are about nine ma minors for you all to choose from. There's liberal arts, so you could do a major in architecture or in design, uh, but you could do a minor in liberal arts, right? You could do a major um, in business study, uh, a major in architecture, but a minor in business studies, you know, a minor in legal studies, but there's something else also that we have in mind while we are doing this. It is to fundamentally make all of you realize that as, our, as people who are going to graduate and work with the built environment, again, notice the word, I'm using the word built environment and not the word architecture because the architecture is only a very small part of the built environment, right? We're going to need people who are going to be able to understand how legality works in making our cities safe. 
we're going to need people who are going to understand how policy works, right? You know, recently the World Bank came up with a very interesting uh, statistic. Uh, I was really stunned to see that, all right? Um, India has less than Nigeria, the number of people who actually work across disciplines in the built environment, right? Nigeria has about 1.25 persons per 100,000 people. India has about 0.43, right? Most of it has really been simply because historically, our schools of architecture, whichever they are, have been, you know, more or less standalone institutes, right? Now, we are at a bit of an advantage because we are part of a large university, which is about nine schools. And what you see here are actually minors that you can get across any of the schools. So, um, you actually want to work on finance and buildings? Great. Go ahead and take a minor in our school of business and finance and combine the question of design and our infrastructure with finance issues, right? And go and find yourself working, not for an architect, but actually for something like the International Finance Association, right? You're somebody who's very interested in understanding how our policies and you want to make a difference in terms of how our policies shape our city. Excellent. Go and do a minor <clears throat> from our School of Governance and Political Studies. Get a minor in policy studies. You know what? We are going to place you then in UNDP, not in an architectural um, uh, institute. So the idea is to really, really broaden what you can do. You know, uh, there's another statistics I'm going to throw for you, right? So let's take a developed country like the United States of America. You know, I lived in that place for about 15 years. I wonder if any of you can guess what are the number of buildings made by architects in a country like the United States? You know, every time I ask this question, I get an answer about 90%. Some people, I say, you want to go a little lower and they'll, they'll bring it down to about 70. Let me give you the number. It's about 7.5%, all right? 93% of the, of, of the buildings in the United States are actually not made by architects. They are made by people who are working in different spheres of what I like to call the built environment, right? Now, in addition to the minors, we have a whole lot of seminars that you all look in, can see, right? And um, you, we, I'll talk a little bit more about these seminars because many of them are interdisciplinary in themselves. There are, some of these seminars are actually legal seminars, which are very much offered as part of your coursework. Some of them are sociology uh, seminars. Some of them are uh, geography seminars, right? They're also part of, of, of your own school work, right? Um, so, and you know, we're a new school. We, we, we do have a kind of a sweet building, which the students themselves have been personalizing and decorating. And the idea really was to create a building which the schools, uh, which the students would themselves um, make in a sense. So that's what we kind of did over the last uh, one year. Um, we have a whole bunch of programs. Um, we started off with the architecture program, but we have, we have something, uh, we have a very unique um, program, one of a kind program in the country, which is called the BA Honors in Built Environment Studies, which is actually a four year uh, uh, BA Honors program, a three plus one year fellowship. And what it allows you to do is something is do something called an architectural studies pathway and an environment and community planning and, and development pathway, right? So the architectural studies pathway are for those um, who uh, come from a social scientific background and actually want to do um, a, a course in architecture, right? Most places in the world actually don't have the kind of limitation that we do in India, that you have to have um, um, physics, chemistry, and math. So what we have done in this program is that after four years, we have tied up with many institutes across the world, and I'll talk about that in a bit, which actually allows you to then go directly for a master's of architecture program and, and you know, become practitioners um, all over the world. Um, the community uh, planning and design uh, development um, uh, program is essentially for those who are much more interested in questions of neighborhood uh, planning, questions of uh, uh, understanding how infrastructure works, uh, questions of how communities, livable communities work, how sustainable communities work and all of that, right? Um, what you see here in front of you is uh, really um, not so much a, a, a pathway, but just how the credit distribution is. Because remember, you guys can kind of make your own coursework. Um, what, how that happens is that after your first uh, foundation year, which is kind of common, 
um, you get to choose any the, any of the ateliers you want. So what you have is you have first year students sitting with second year students sitting with third year students and 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 working on a life project together, right? You get to choose the kind of electives you want or the, the kind of seminars that you want to, when you want to take them, right? You get to choose the kind of minor credits you want to take, whichever semester you want to take, how you want to uh, space them out, right? That's true of the architecture program. Um, that's also true of the built environment studies program, right? So what you so what you see here is uh, that that we tell you at the beginning that all right, you've got to finish that many pathway seminars, um, but the choice is really yours, and you've got to finish that many minor uh, seminars, but the choice is really yours when you want to take them, how you want to take them, right? And same for the ateliers, right? So the, and our ateliers are, are like I said. They're like a little office, right? With your with the faculty being the lead architects or the lead designers or the lead community planners who bring a project into the atelier, um, which is a live project, which is going on. So there's a client, there's a uh, you know there are structural uh, you know consultants, there are all kinds of consultants, and you actually work on it uh, for uh, for four and a half five months, uh, and you see it you know from a certain point uh, from the beginning, depending on which atelier you are in. So if you're in the site atelier, you're going to see it through the entire site process. If you're in the form atelier, you're going to see the entire development of the form. Uh, if you're in what's called the services atelier, uh, you get to, uh, you, you are going to design and build the entire services for that particular project. You know? In fact, our second year students um, you know, designed an entire services for a huge farmhouse in Delhi for the Dalmias, which is now uh, getting implemented, right? So that's 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 how it's working. Right? Um, this year, we are also introducing a new program, uh, which is the uh, the BDES program in interior design. And essentially, um, it has somewhat the same structure, right? So you can you can go ahead and so all the ateliers, the interior design ateliers, will have life projects that you will do, right? You will have similar pathway seminars um, that are there along for you. You can choose from any of the 10 uh, minors that you are there, right? Okay, so how is it that we are doing all of this, right? Uh, one of the things, and, and this has been a real challenge for all of us, um, is to really pull together a fantastic group of faculty. So one of the things that we have done is actually gone all over the world, uh, me being one of those people who was out of, the, out of this country, uh, and brought together people um, who are from some of the top 20 schools all over the world. And here's the interesting criteria we told all of them. Uh, and we, you know, when we, when we do get people in, it's like, okay, you've got to have one foot in architecture, put another foot in something else. So, you know, uh, as the interview is in architecture, but I have a master's in cultural studies. I have a master's in history and theory. Then I have a PhD in architecture. I have an MA in anthropology and then another PhD in anthropology. Right. Um, so a lot of our faculty members, in fact, about 70 percent of our faculty members are actually Ph.D. holders um, from the top 20 institutes in the world. So I'm just going to show you there a little bit about them. Right. Um, right. Uh, so, you know, there's, for example, Girish, Girish, uh, who you see in front of you, um, you know, started off as a um, structural engineer, but went on to do a Ph.D. in geothermal engineering, but then went on to do a Ph.D. in law. And, and Girish sort of uh, was one of the foremost workers in the California municipality and was part of the designer of the California suburban systems, right? So we plucked Girish up and got him here. Uh, Tom Michael, who's our dean, um, you know, has an undergraduate in design, has a master's in architecture and a PhD in science fiction. Um, and, uh, you know, Tom uh, uh, was working in Australia and in uh, the US, went and picked Tom up. Uh, you see Aditya, Aditya uh, undergraduate degrees in actually journalism, but a PhD uh, in cultural geography and human geography. He was at Heidelberg, you know, went and picked him up. Um, Wills uh, has an undergraduate in architecture, a master's in law and a, P a PhD in project management. Um, Sarovar, an undergraduate in sociology, uh, sorry, an undergraduate in philosophy, a master's in sociology and a PhD in architecture. She was at Utrecht in Netherlands, picked her up, right? Uh, 
Kilje, an undergraduate in architecture, but a PhD in technology studies, um, you, know, you know, from Tokyo Institute of Technology, went and picked him up. Uh, Zai has done her undergraduate in architecture, uh, a master's, a two, dual master's in gender studies and, and, and built in VAM studies, right? And uh, University of Cincinnati picked her up. Uh, Alok Parna is from the Politecnico de Milan. Um, she has an undergraduate in architecture, a master's in governance studies, uh, uh, sorry, a master's in, in project management, a PhD in governance studies from Politecnico de Milan. So, you know, went and picked her up. The idea uh, is to really um, get people from uh, the best uh, universities in the world and, and put them together and, and develop a kind of a coursework um, unlike anything that exists um, you know, in, in, in India at the time. Um, but apart from all of this, um, you know, because all of us are uh, folks who have lived all over the world, taught all over the world uh, for the last 15, 20 years, um, the idea, we, we, you know, we, we are extremely connected as a group, right? So uh, we have friends all over the world and who are constantly coming to the university and uh, who are constantly giving talks, right? And, and not only about, as I said, architecture, but about across the discipline, right? So you have Annapurna, who's actually from Harvard, uh, who had come in Amit, who's at Adelaide, uh, who had come in Julia, came and gave a wonderful talk about vegetarianism in the built environment. And, you know, she's, uh, I think, from, uh, <clears throat> uh, from uh, uh, the Max Planck Institute. Um, we, you know, we, we also have some fantastic things and you can follow us on Spotify, We've got this fantastic uh, podcast series that, you know, and where we get a lot of people from, again, across India and the world, some of the top names, you know, uh, uh, we had recently, this was very recent, we had Sulakshana and Harman came in. Sulakshana is a wonderful, she's, she's India's first woodworker, woman woodworker. Um, you know, she was actually a, a policy studies person in the United States, had lived there for 20 years. Um, decided that she actually wanted to take up woodworking, uh, very, was very interested. And then she uh, practiced that for about 10 years to the United, in, in the United States, came back here and, you know, started her own um, woodworking um, uh, show, uh, sort of showroom and, and practice. And, and, you know, she's, she's, she's India's first woman woodworker who's teaching traditional carpenters how to use power tool. And, and Selection actually takes a lot of workshops with us and is taking one of our ateliers, uh, which is uh, called the Objects and Equipment Atelier, right? Uh, which is there uh, for that. You know, we recently had Jayati Ghosh come and talk. Jayati, as you all may know, is one of the foremost sort of economists um, uh, of the country. And we had a very interesting discussion with her on how uh, basically, uh, on the question of economics and our cities and, and what COVID has been doing to all of them, right? Um, there's a lot more that, that, that actually happens at the JSA. Uh, what I would suggest, uh, for those of you who are interested, uh, go to the Instagram page, which is jsa.jgu. Uh, it's totally curated by our students. You can uh, take a look at kind of work they do. You can take a look at the kind of life they have um, uh, on uh, at, at the JSA. And you can also sort of, you know, shoulder tap all of them and talk to them, right? And I'm sure they can tell you a lot more. You can do the same with our Facebook page. There's also a Twitter thing that you can follow, right? I would like to end um, uh, this presentation by also giving you a bit of a snapshot about the Jindal Global University. Um, you see, some of the things that are really, really possible for us uh, are because that we are part of a, of a large university, right? Jindal now has uh, collaborations with about 250 top universities in the world, which include places like Harvard, Cornell, Oxford, um, you know, Rice, you name it, right? And so our students get um, an exchange opportunity with all of them, right? Because there are more than about 250 um, um, schools that are uh, universities that we collaborate with. Um, we, you know, Jindal has close to about 15% um, of its faculty members who are actually international faculty members, right? Um, you get a lot of, so through them, you get to understand how the rest of the world is working. And, and uh, we have a very small student to faculty ratio. Uh, in fact, Jindal has one is to nine, the School of Architecture has about one is to seven. Uh, um, as, as a faculty ratio, the, um, the, the campus itself is wonderful. It's about a hundred acres. It's 
got all kinds of facilities and amenities that you can think of, right from Olympic size swimming pools and, you know, food courts and a gazillion things happen on any particular day at Jindal. There are about 10 talks happening across the nine schools that are there at least. So it's a very, 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 very lively atmosphere, right? And, uh, you know, recently we've also been granted an institution of eminence, um, which allows us to uh, do a lot of things which other universities are not allowed, which is one of the reasons why we can have so many international faculty uh, as part of our teaching, uh, uh, you know, uh, group, right? Um, more recently, in fact, this was just day before yesterday, we also got announced as the top private university in the country by the QS ranking, right? So all of these are things. Um, research is something that is very, very prevalent at Jindal. In fact, you know, I just told you about 70% of the faculty at JSA are PhDs, which is perhaps the highest in the country. Uh, so research is very much a part of our school. In fact, all of us are uh, working on all kinds of research projects, which are funded by uh, the Department of Science and Technology India. We have an Indo-Korean grant already going on. Kilje, who is actually from Korea, is heading that. We have about three centers in the school. There's something called the Jindal Center for Social Design. There's something called called well, the, uh, the, the Center for Historic Houses, and there's something called the Center for Urban Design. Um, in addition to this, Jindal itself has about 55 to 60 interdisciplinary research centers where our students can really sit. All our students can actually go and work, uh, but we also have what are called capacity building institutes, right? Um, so there's something called the Institute of Higher Education. There's something called the Institute of Behavioral Sciences. There's something <clears throat> uh, called the uh, Executive Education, uh, where we constantly sort of bring people in from the field. We train them, they train us. So all of this um, uh, really happens. And uh, finally, uh, like on, on, on a final note, the, the, the other big thing um, that's, that's really there as part of Kindle is, uh, is the career uh, services, right? As I, as I mentioned earlier, the, the way we are training our students is to really reimagine where you can work. And thankfully, Jindal has a, uh, has a wonderful, wonderful placement seller. This is about the university itself is about 10, 10 years old, right? And it, it has close to about, um, you know, about 3,000 odd alumni who it is already placed all over. We are a new school, but we are in uh, talks with all of them to really reimagine where we can place our students, right? So I said, uh, you know, uh, most of our students, we are actually looking for people who are going to say, you know what, I do not want to work in the traditional um, uh, field of architecture or, or of design. We, I want to think where I can combine many, many things at work. And that's the way we are kind of um, imagining how the career placement at our, at our school goes, all right? So thank you, um, thank you for your time and, and good for all of you to have been here. Thank you, sir, that was a great uh, session and it was immensely informative. Thank you once again so much for your time. Um, next institution uh, that is joining us, we have Miyasi Academy of Architecture, Chennai. So Miyasi Academy of Architecture uh, was established in the year 1999. It is approved by Council of Architecture and affiliated by Anna University. The Institute, the Institute is headed by Professor Altaf Ahmed, director and his team of highly quali qualified and experienced faculty uh, from uh. across India and abroad. The institution is, a collaboration, is in collaboration with Westminster University, UK, other partner institutions in latitude projects from from Colombia and Brazil. Miasi is one amongst the standalone colleges of architecture in South India. Their vision is to, to become an internationally recognized center of education, training and design, providing education which enables students to, know, to hone their talents and also to demonstrate their creativity and originality, to also help develop students' overall personality and to make them feel the urge to serve the society professionally. Joining us from Miyasi, we have the Dean, Dr. A. N. Sachinanandan, who has over four decades of academic research and extension experience, headed many national level committees of architecture and planning education of COA and AICTE, member board of studies of many universities, widely traveled in UK, USA, Singapore, Italy, and Japan. And along with Sir, we have Professor Dr. Priya 
uh, Sasi Dharan. So uh, kindly make a note of the details of the college on screen if you have any questions or queries. May I request Dr. Satyanandan to uh, share a few words and initiate the presentation. Thank you. Ma'am, yes, ma'am, we can, uh, we can see you. I mean, I think, sir, might be on... Ma'am, your voice is not clear. I think I mean, sir, might be on mute. Adin, are you able to hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am, it's uh, very soft. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, a little better, ma'am. Uh, I think uh, Sir might be on uh, mute. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, I'll just check that. Yeah, can you just check? Yes, sure, ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, we, we've unmuted you, ma'am. Um, yeah, can you... Can uh, Sir come on video? Uh, sir, can you come on video? Can I just uh, start off with the presentation? Uh, because I think Sir might be having some connectivity issue. Sure, ma'am. Please do. So can I just share my screen? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, are you able to hear me and uh, see the uh, shared screen? Yes, ma'am, we can. Good evening, uh, all of you. Uh, on behalf of all of us at Miasi Academy of Architecture and along with our dean, our management, we would like to take you through the profile of our institution. Miasi Academy of Architecture the portals of premier architectural education. Miasi Academy of Architecture, a standalone premier institution located in the heart of Chennai city, approved by Council of Architecture, New Delhi, 
and affiliated to Anna University Chennai, was founded in the year 1999 under the auspices of Muslim Educational Association of South India, Niasi, a 104-year-old trust headed by eminent personalities from various domains and fields of expertise in education, industry, business, and profession. It started its pursuit of excellence in imparting quality education, offering a five-year BR course from the year 1999 onwards. Keeping in mind the broader perspective and challenges of urban growth and development, which throws open an array of lucrative opportunities in the real estate development sector, the MR Real Estate Development Program, the only one of its kind in the country, is successfully being conducted from the year 2008. The second postgraduate program, MR General, was started in 2013 with advanced design as its focus. The undergraduate course BIAC has an intake of 160 students and the postgraduate courses have an intake of 20 students each with the eligibility criteria as stipulated by Council of Architecture and Anna University Chen. Moving on to the profile and as part of it, the vision statement of the academy. It includes imparting need-based education and skills, developing the student's overall personality, becoming an international recognized center of education and training, not only in architecture and design, but also achieving the status of an international center for allied research and documentation in architecture. The mission being providing excellent architectural programs, developing students' critical thinking, honing their decision-making and technical skills, improving the standards of education, striving for excellence and inculcating maturity and a sense of responsibility in them, and above all of this, contributing to the growth and effective functioning of the entire architectural profession by maintaining the highest professional ethical standards. Our board of trustees, our management, our chairman, Janab Nawab Mohammed Abdul Ali Asinja, His Highness, the Prince of Arcot, a very well-known, highly respected and committed social activist involved in many social, cultural, and religious institutions of the country. Honorary Secretary, Janab T. Rafiq Ahmed, an educationist and a businessman, and our honorary treasurer, Janab Ilyas Seth, a chartered accountant by profession and a businessman. Our prime movers of the academy, our director, Professor N. Altaf Ahmed, has been a dedicated academician, extremely sincere in his profession, and a man of principles and conviction, backed with five decades of professional practice and academic experience in India and the Middle East, especially teaching at university level, his unstinted and unblemished record of more than 20 years of leadership at Miyasi Academy of Architecture needs very special mention. He has been convener, Council of Architecture Inspection Committee, member of Board of Studies, Syllabus Committee, and examiner at various renowned universities. He is also recipient of Fountainhead Lifetime Achievement Award 2012 by COA and the prestigious IIA Madhav Achwal Gold Medal in December 2016, to mention just a few of the awards and citations received by him, and he's widely traveled. Our Dean, Dr. A. N. Sachidanandan, over five decades of academic research and extensive experience, he has headed many national level committees of architecture, planning education of COA, AICTE, All India President of ITPI for four terms, member of multi-storied building committee of CMDA, member board of studies of many renowned universities. He is also the recipient of the prestigious Dr. Radha Krishnan Award for excellence in teaching. He has widely traveled in UK, USA, Singapore, Italy, and Japan. Our principal, Dr. Monsing David Devdas, 
More than 33 years of teaching, research, and consultancy experience has been the former Dean and former Chairman Board of Studies at SAP Anna University, a Fulbright Fellow, BOG member currently at SPA Vijaywada, and traveled widely in connection with presenting papers and conferences to many countries abroad. Our head of the department, Professor S. Kesarlu, has taught for more than five decades to BR and MR students, besides being a very active structural engineering consultant to many of the architects. His postgraduate qualification in teaching of engineering professional courses needs mention, being a very highly specialized course, first of its kind, secure to an All India selection process. He has also had special training in computer-aided planning and design at University of Nottingham, UK, and is also very widely traveled. The reason for highlighting the prime movers of this academy is because the greatest core strength of our academy lies in the vast professional and academic experience of the spearheads, our director, dean, principal, and HOD, with decades of unstinted, dedicated contribution to the larger cause of architectural education. Moving on to our faculty, we have the largest team of 68 full-time faculty, five full-time highly experienced design chairs, three of them having close to four decades of practice and vast professional and academic experience, one of them being the former member secretary and chief urban planner of CMDA, and one of the design chairs being the former Dean, SAP Anna University Chairman. We also have among our very senior and experienced design faculty, three former deans of School of Architecture and Planning, Anna University Chairman. We are a harmonious and balanced blend of young, mid-career and senior academicians and practicing professionals, many of them qualified from Bartlett, Delft, Nottingham, California State University, Manchester, SPA, SEPT, SAP, to just name a few. And most of them are very actively involved beyond academics in research, practice, and consultancy work. We also have four doctorates, six faculty members pursuing PhD, four in the process of registering for PhD, and six full-time allied teaching faculty in structures, civil, mathematics, and visual architecture. You can see uh, and run through the list of our full-time faculty, a good combination with their masters and specialization in varying fields, not just limited to architecture, but landscape, conservation, sustainability, building sciences, project management, just to name a few. Our visiting faculty, I think I definitely have to stress on this here because the highlight of our academy's academic excellence is the participation of our practicing architects and allied professionals in not just core academic activities that give our students the opportunity to get core competence, to face real life situation and to integrate theory and practical application. We'd like to place on record that we have more than 35 visiting faculty and every year it only keeps increasing. They not only interact at our studios, dissertation and thesis, but they also very actively participate and lend advice and help and support our workshops, seminars, guest lectures, internship opportunities, both at undergraduation and post-graduation level. I'm afraid I might miss calling out a few of their names. We have listed down some of our visiting faculty from the very senior most to the mid-career and the young visiting faculty who visit our department. Exclusively, the team is organized for the undergraduate design studios, postgraduate MR general and real estate development studies. We have Professor Sen Gupta, a very senior eminent professional who is based in the US, who comes down for a month and spends two to three weeks with our students at the design studio, continuously guiding them and many of the other senior architects. And we also have real-time exposure through very eminent personalities who come in from Jones Lang LaSalle, who are the strategic consulting wings, 
chief operating officer, not only in India, but Sri Lanka and Nepal. And we also have a specific visiting faculty for the allied subjects. Going over to our infrastructure facilities, the strategic and prime location of the campus is right in the heart of the city at Roipeta, which offers a great advantage for our academy, which is a standalone institution. The academy has state-of-the-art infrastructure with spacious, well-lit studios and furniture, which has the flexibility of arranging for reviews, discussions, etc classrooms, well-equipped smart class with video conferencing facilities, computer labs with 120 terminals with licensed software, an expansive library with the latest and very good collection of books, journals, magazines, which is one of our recent additions, well beyond the earlier old library, our lecture halls, space for workshops, construction yard, survey climatology lab, material museum, to just name a few. A well-designed air-conditioned auditorium with a seating capacity of 435 persons has been the latest envious addition to our academy. Hostel facilities for boys have also been made available within the campus, while sports and training grounds are also accommodated within a large play field in the campus. You can also see some of the pictures of our specialized workshop. Moving on to our teaching structure and the process of learning, we would be running through our samples of works at the various studios, but Miasi very consciously believes on honing the potential and creative originality of our students when they come in from school, upgrading their knowledge quotient and enhancing the skills which they already have and which they newly inculcate. Imparting theoretical knowledge with practical application has always been our approach and opening out avenues for exploration and experimentation of the young minds has been a conscious drive. So the structure of this presentation would touch upon the following areas. I would like to take you through creative skill enhancement learning from the masters, form exploration, and hands-on workshop, which would relate to our foundation studio known as basic design. Moving on to architecture as a humanizing factor and learning through travel at our rural studios. Digital visualization as an interface and collaborative studios at our higher semester. Thematic studios at our postgraduate studies and honing the competitive spirit sensitization and global exposure, interaction with experts, publications and documentation, all of these four, which has consciously been integrated through all the years. These are some of the pictures from our foundation studio, Basic Design, where the creative skills with which they come in are shaped and honed further. We identify the talent and potential in each student and strongly believe every student comes in with a very unique talent that needs to be honed through the five years. Learning from the masters, which again, we concentrate so that students gain the knowledge and see through the process of design. Then moving on to hands-on workshop and form exploration, where they get to have a feel of the material, the structural properties and qualities of the material only if they literally feel it by hand. So it literally becomes experiential learning where they put it onto the table with the models. You can see a few pictures at our model making and architectural delineation studio, which is integral and part of the first year basic design foundation level. Moving on to the second part of it, which we would like to call it as architecture, the humanizing factor, which is our rural study studios. We just don't look at rural study studios as just part of the syllabus because we always try and go beyond the syllabus. 
And students here are exposed to experiential learning, understanding nuances of rural life, rural communities, the socio-cultural layers that shape the settlements, and the distinct architecture of the village. Uh, kudos has definitely to be given to our faculty who go through a very deep, intrinsic selection system that they follow for the villages, which we look out for as a conscious study of villages based on cultural landscape, ethnic communities, craft or occupation based, and a very unique vernacular experience. So we've taken you through uh, villages of Sundapur, Sigur, Kodian Palayan, and Karekudi, just to give you a very few of it. This is mainly being meticulously done to sensitize our students to naturally evolving architectural solutions in response to various factors. Moving on to the higher semesters, the studios at the higher semesters are not just aimed at architectural end products, but as an experience of the process, inspiration from contemporary context, nuances of detailing, and we move on to theme-based studios, where our underlying crux is always there on functional complexities, exploration of structure, to realization of form, experiments of density. All of these have been experimented over the years. Students have always been encouraged to enhance their visualization and digital skills by exposing them to the use of latest software. And we have also organized training sessions with experts, the most recent one being in QGIS. You can see some of our uh, theme studios at Urban Design, where we just don't concentrate on a portion of the city or urban issues or analysis, but we have a core and a focus, either it is on the peripheral areas or on specific issues related to ecology and sustainability. Or as in the most recent studio that we had on the emerging corridors and urban node, as in the case of Tandri. You can see some of the works done by our students as a teamwork and as individual contribution when it comes to the proposal stage where we strongly believe in teamwork as well as each of them hone their specific talents while working in the team. Moving on to our final year undergraduate thesis project, we look at this as a culmination point of all their talents, learning put together of the nine semesters that they have traveled this journey of architectural excellence with us. Every student is given a free hand to choose a topic of their interest, develop it, whether it is hardcore theoretical, practical, application oriented, or a good balance of both. And a vast range of typologies are also opened out to them. Here are a few uh, examples. Very explorative. Now, moving on to our postgraduate studios. Now, as I had told you earlier, postgraduate studios work on a basis of themed studios, where we use a very conscious theme-based approach that has included a very unique process of experiential learning, exploring the macro level spectrum, along with microcosms of detail, both in the urban context and advanced architectural design. Projects range from specific thrust on ecological issues, urban design, sustainable planning and emerging growth corridors, to name a few. The one that you're seeing with the internal publication of a book done by our MR students is on emerging urban corridor, where the students were introspecting a satellite town, Marimalai Nagar, in its current context. So we look at live projects so that ground realities are also exposed to them. The other MR studios, where there is a good integration of computer skills, the latest softwares for analysis of uh, energy, performance levels, etc. Moving on to our MR real estate development, where the studio is specifically called a project, because the entire process varies very much from the MR general studio, where the focus tends to be on trend analysis, market studies, 
financial outlays, IRRs, marketing strategies and spacing for the various stages, interaction with realtors, government officials, prospective buyers. We got tremendous support from professionals at Predai who visits our institution and several other big uh, corporate and real estate firms which have been supporting us through seminars, guest lectures, and they're also part of our review panel. The real estate projects delve not only into specific case studies within Chennai, but we look at Pan India. So we've had students studying specific issues individually at Pune, Magarbata, Hyderabad, Mangalore, Bangalore, and Mumbai, to name a few. Regular interaction with experts from the profession, as I have told you earlier, synchronizes theory and application, and this strengthens the professional traits in all our postgraduate students. We've also had collaborative work when it comes in terms of PG studios between the MRC General and the MRC RED students. Moving on to seminars and workshops, we just don't limit it to only our students. We also have it for our faculty because Miasi Academy strongly believes in constant upgradation of knowledge of faculty and students. And in this pursuit, we've organized several seminars, workshops, and guest lectures, not only with experts from India, but also abroad. You can see one of it on sustainability. The most recent one that we had in market dynamics and ground reality for the real estate students and our postgraduate students. And some of the guest lectures with experts from India and abroad. We had a team visiting us from Ball State University, America. Some of the other lectures that we've had on a host of topics, not just limited to architectural design, but also delving into real estate, sustainability, heritage and conservation. The Academy has also established the Indian Institute of Architects Institutional Membership. We also have an institutional green building chapter and impact student chapter. This is mainly to act as a forum for activities, exchange of information and interaction with practicing architects and allied professionals from the industry. The faculty development programs in collaboration with COA and TRC has been a regular schedule in our academic calendar. This again is not only to impart training to our faculty, but also hone interaction between faculty of our academy and other institutions in India. And the emphasis has always been on constant updating of our teachers' skills and knowledge. Many of them are encouraged to participate in national and international symposiums. Many of them have participated, presented at conferences, published papers in reputed journals, and have won awards at many design competitions. The encouragement has been so much that many of them have been motivated to join advanced studies as in doctoral studies. You can see uh, one of the recent ones, Disaster uh, Risk Mitigation Workshop, one on green buildings. This is a very interesting part of our collaborative studios. We have collaborative studios at the final year that we had conducted with IMPACT and National Folklore Support Center. This was uh, widely published in the paper and print. And we also had an open house. Uh, in general, we uh, encourage having an open day and an open house because students feel very good at exhibiting their work. Parents, the general public also get to know what is the sort of honing of skills that our students go through. And our faculty are also involved with impact on a variety of uh, projects, training, etc. When it comes to learning through travel, which is a very continuous affair in Niasi and not just limited to either the rural or the North India. This learning through travel starts at the uh, micro level from site visits for design, interiors, structure and architecture, spatial manifestation, building services, regular visits to live construction sites, not only for the undergraduates, but also for the postgraduate students. Here you can see our postgraduate students at uh, the site visits. 
You can also see our real estate students at the site visit to Lavasa Magarbata, which is the most recent. We just don't stop with learning through travel in the Indian context. We've also moved out, which I will uh, touch upon a little later. You can see the rural study visits and the North India students tour, which is again, not just looked at as an educational tour, but we make sure that students get to meet eminent architects at their firms, interact and make it a platform of exchange. Coming over to the laurels, competitions and awards and the university ranks, we've consistently had a record of top ranks among all affiliated institutions of architecture in Anna University, close to around 89 ranks until 2019 from the date of inception. And uh, you can see uh, the eight ranks in VR and the first rank in VR and MAC uh, last year, 2019. And a host of competitions, not just at national, but also at international level. I will quickly run through a few. The first place, exemplary performance, square factor, international level, Fab Fest, which we've been uh, you know, participating from the year 2016, which was uh, made possible by a MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding with Westminster University, UK. And this competition was opened out to 33 teams on a global front. And we are very happy to share with you that the top four prizes among the 33 global teams was backed by Miyaki. The first place uh, at the national level was for the awards of excellence in uh, heritage documentation, honorable mention at the Latitude Global Exhibition conducted at SEP, second place national level society imperial, to just name very few. When I was talking about uh, learning from travel, I did say we have moved out globally. Our students have gone for a 10-day summer school, which was organized by Lincoln University UK on rethinking architecture, in which 20 students have attended from Niasi for the program, and they won a lot of prizes. And from the year 2016, our students have participated every year and won prizes at the International Fabrication Fab Fest Festival at UK. You can see the three uh, winning teams and you can also see one of the fabrication based installation that they had done. Some of the other competitions which I had made a mention of. It is not just about hardcore academics. Miasi is a way beyond that, because we believe on holistic development of our students, which includes sports and extracurricular activities, which is a critical part of any learning process, which is given equal importance at the academy. The academy conducts an annual sports meet where all our students participate in various indoor and outdoor sporting games. I'm very happy to also note and say it is entirely organized, scheduled and monitored by our students making it a complete student-oriented event, allowing them to hone their leadership skills, teamwork, and sportive attitude. This yearly event also stages competitions for creative art, John art, painting, t-shirt, uh, designing, elocution, debate, etc. You can see some of the uh, events as part of our sports day, extracurricular activities. Our close interaction and cordial relationship with Council of Architecture, Anna University, IIA, and ITPI has enabled the Academy to deliver the very best of architectural education to students. We'd like to mention that all the vice chancellors of Anna University and presidents of Council of Architecture have visited the Academy at its, as it has been considered a benchmark institution. This is uh, 2019, our 15th graduation day where uh, we were very honored to have our current Vice Chancellor of Anna University, Dr. M.K. Surappa, who had uh, been the chief guest for our graduation day. The Academy is also actively involved in institutional practice as in projects of the Children's Hospital Egmore, uh, Smart City Project Tanjavu, and Heritage Documentation for CMDA. Now, some of these projects open out uh, you know, the sort of uh, sensitization to students because they also get to know about real-time projects and ground realities. 
The journey of this institution from its very humble beginnings with 40 students of PIAC in the year 99 has now grown to a total strength of around 860 students with almost 53% out of it being girls. And this by itself, the journey, is a testimony to the academic trajectory of Miyasi Academy of Architecture. At this juncture, it has to be placed on record that every year, the Academy receives close to 800 applications for its 80 seats in the management quota. And in the single window system of counseling, nearly 90% of our seats get filled on the very first day. The Academy keeps its academic objectives constantly moving ahead of time, which has helped MIASI to create a niche of its own. University of Bradford, UK, Robert Gordon University, Aberdeen and Education Matters presented the Engineers Educators Award to MIASI Academy of Architecture for exemplary commitment and impactful positive contribution to the education sector in the presence of Mr. Mike, British Deputy High Commissioner Chennai. Miyasi Academy of Architecture is growing from strength to strength from its inception in 1999 until now in its 21st year is providing value-based architectural education that promises to create mature professionals with strong ethics, dedication, and commitment to the larger cause of the society. Our alumni and current students are doing very well with internship and career opportunities at some of the most well-known, popular, award-winning international firms of MVRDV, UN Studio, Zaha Hadid, to name a few. And we are very happy to also tell you that our alumni are constantly in touch with us and many of them also become part of the external support and resource team for our students at various levels. They also come in to motivate our students through workshops and seminars. By now, at the end of this entire presentation, all of you would have realized that the academic honesty while dealing with student issues, maintenance of discipline and collaborative decision making are the highlights of Miyasi Academy of Architecture, which is on par with the reputed international institutions. It is the essence of these traits in our students and alumni that has shaped their career, advanced studies, practice and profession in India and abroad, which reinforces the choice that each one of you make of a premier architectural education at a premier institution like Miyasi Academy of Architecture. From all of us at Miyasi Academy of Architecture, our management, director, dean, principal, HOD, all our faculty, our students, alumni, and our support team, we wish each one of you aspirants good luck for queries, uh, and admission related questions, you can please address it to our director, Miyasi Academy of Architecture. Uh, our email is arcmiyasi at gmail.com. Our website, www.miyasiarc.in. I think there is a small correction in the phone number that was earlier displayed at the start of the presentation by RBS. Kindly note that our phone number is 044 I repeat, the phone number is 44 Thank you, uh, RBS and the team at RBS for uh, creating this platform for all the premier institutions to come on board. Thank you. Can I uh, stop uh, screen sharing? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, it is an honor to have you and sir uh, with us on board. Thank you again. Thank um, you. Our next and final institution joining us is Krivya Institute of Architecture, Mumbai. The initiative of the Uma Upanagar Shikshan Mandal, USM, is one of the premier institutes of architecture in Mumbai. It offers a bachelor's in architecture degree, BIAC, and two full-time master's courses, MARC Urban Design and Urban Conservation. All of these courses are run under the aegis of the University of Mumbai. From Krivya, we have architect Aniruddha Paul. He is presently the director of Krivya Mumbai. Through his works at the Krivya, he has been involved in numerous research projects, 
engaged with various stakeholders like the government, community-based organizations to provide alternative imagination for a sustainable urban future of Indian cities. From 2003 onwards, he has been an advisor to the Collective Research Initiatives Trust, CRIT, which does research and, in, and intervention projects on contemporary culture and spatial practices in the city of Mumbai. For the required details that you need, uh, we have put it up on the screen. Please take note of it. I now request Dr. Anirudha Paul to say uh, to start with his presentation. Okay, Thank you, I'll sir. start with sharing my screen actually. Yes, let sir, you me, can start. Yeah, let me just get into my PowerPoint. So uh, I can already see the participants reducing. So I know I get the message very clear and strong that I have to keep myself within 20 minutes. Okay. And uh, also, what I'm going to do today is not to exp uh, actually uh, talk too much about only the college. The college will be the platform that I need. I'll talk about also. But I think I'll attempt to touch on architecture as a bigger idea. So, and I know that uh, most of you who are actually in this uh, participants in this, okay. Uh, for me, it doesn't matter whether you join KRVI or join one of the good colleges, but why should you be an architect? I think that's a very important question to me. Okay, I'll try to explain it through what we do at the KRVI. That's something which we will try to answer. But I think that's a very important question to me. Okay, uh, and especially given the present times, uh, can the architect play a role? Okay, given the like, sudden change of events that we have, whether it be flooding, whether it be earthquake, whether it be tsunamis, that seems to actually increase in numbers. Okay, can the architect play a role? And very importantly also, like since you're choosing a career option, uh, is architecture only a career? Or is it more than a career? For me, architecture, well, it has to be a career. It is a career, but I think it's also a calling. So what I'll do is through this uh, 20 slides only, I'll try to explain the heart and soul of the KRVI, but try to keep uh, a, 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 a rather uh, like understanding of probably why should you all be architects? Okay, I think that's something which is important to me. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll close my video screen because my bandwidth here is low. So I'll not uh, actually use the video. Can you can you actually actually cut off the video? Any any one of the okay, uh -huh, there it is. I, I'll stop the video. Yeah. So so I hope you can see the screen actually. Uh, so we are located in Mumbai, as explained, uh, and uh, and uh, as explained, we are a, we are actually a very small college. We are a affiliated college to the University of Mumbai. We are a standalone architecture college, and we are located, as I've said, at Juhu in Mumbai which is the heart of the city that's where bollywood is okay if you throw a stone it goes and lands into amitabh's bungalow actually from the college so we are in one of the prime localities and we'll also show you i'll also show you actually why i'm saying this not because like it's a i want you to come to the krvi or any such thing but it's very important to us very important to the school itself because that's what the school is that's what lot the school is about so what I'll do first is, um, I'll start my slideshow actually. Let's, it's not going forward. Somehow it's not going forward. Let me just try to see what... Uh, try to click it, sir. I'm click with it, the mouse. I'll just again or the uh, arrow button. I'll again go in the presentation mode. Okay, it's gone. Okay, thank you. Okay, so 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 as uh, like a lot of the speakers before me have actually uh, spoken about this aspect of 
what architecture is and architecture actually uh, does not look only at the idea of the profession the idea of action what what i call okay where architectural forms interior design forms where there are government agencies working and producing buildings okay there are actually people who are thinking about architecture okay who are actually laying the policies of architecture it might be governments it might be municipalities okay a lot of the i believe the ideation happens there and then there's, there's the third thing is academia and academia also plays an important role of creating new knowledge or being able to uh, like educate students creating learning environments for architecture and uh, uh, like for us like architecture just to like this is what we train for architects for architecture looking architecture and seeing architecture as a profession that's fine that's given i think that's already decided that architecture is a profession but it's a profession with a difference and others have been telling you that that it's a profession uh, which actually when you do a building when you make a building it has an art aspect involved in it it's aesthetics also and you can talk about a building you can criticize a building it's like it's a, it's like a like when you make a film also you talk about the film you critique the uh, film also so an architecture is not so much with the doctors might not be so much with the the the, the chartered accountants so architecture has a cultural aspect to it and i call architecture is a cultural practice and moment it becomes a cultural practice uh, you have to create a certain knowledge base and that's where i believe a lot of the understanding of history and theory is very integral to architecture is just not that we are training you to be skilled architects we are training you to be able to understand what is good architecture okay that's what matters in today's time and in today's day a good architecture is very important because as one of the speakers has been also saying that it is the built environment which matters and we need to be able to understand how what are the values embedded in the built environment it's just not making one iconic object that you can make you can create values you have to create values through certain understandings which are based on knowledge creation itself what what values are and values keep changing let's understand that values keep changing what must what might have been uh, possible or what might have been valued 50 years back okay is completely a different set of values where we value the environment so much now okay so so what happens when actually we look at uh, the whole aspect of the cultural practice okay we start to understand that architecture is just not a profession it's a discipline and when i say it's a discipline is just not let's say the 23rd branch of engineering absolutely not architecture i believe is by itself okay very important aspect to architecture is the idea that it's a completely different field where we actually learn to make and very much connected to this making is the idea of performative learning what i call as performative learning the performative learning is something all of you must be actually aware of some of you must have learned music music is performative learning you can't learn it through books like cycling is performative learning a surgeon actually performs as a surgeon so architecture very much is a performative has a performative aspect to it while other branches of engineering will have some of them will have might not have also but and that's a very important aspect that architecture can be seen as a discipline where knowledge creation to architecture is very very important and it's and it's linked to the profession if you're not able to create knowledge the profession doesn't survive the good a profession with values don't survive and finally finally uh, what you go through when you train yourself as an architect is not only the art of building i don't think it ends there okay architecture is understood as a metaphor so when i say it's a metaphor like i'll give you an example lot of my students also are not architects they are writers so how does the writer use architecture okay but when you talk to them you realize that fundamental to their being being a writer is the fact that they have been trained as architects okay and uh, and thus because architecture is a is a, is a, is a as aspect which deals with the idea of making okay and integrated to the idea of making 
is the fact that uh, you can do a, a, a lot of other things when you train yourself as an architect. Okay, in fact, nation builders are refer referred to as architects, and with the, with the reason that they are very important, there is a certain aspect of making that they understand. So, for for us in the KRVI, we believe it's a very important aspect that we understand architecture as a metaphor. Okay, I'll not go through much into the every every year, but I'll try to explain what we do in the school. Actually, for us in the KRVI. The school is an important space for shaping individuals. Okay, from the first year to the fifth year, if you go, okay, we shape individuals. We shape the mind. We shape the human mind. Skills are important. I don't disagree to the uh, aspect that skills are important. Okay. Uh, in fact, what we understand is students when they come in the first year, before the first year, okay, they have actually very very strong ideas of what success is in the world. What is what is what is material uh, success in the world? Okay, uh, so so actually, when when a student comes into the form of education that we go through till the twelfth standard, lot of what we do is challenge those forms of education. Okay, and while we challenge these uh, forms of education, we make you very aware as an individual what you are. In fact, uh, to us, when we uh, like uh, have students. Like we have fantastic diversity of students, whether it be in class, caste, ethnicity, religion, name it. Okay. In fact, it has moved. Let's understand architecture. If you had seen 50 years back, it would be a very, very uh, a, a profession which be, which would be controlled by a set of I, I call them professional guilds probably professional guilds. Now we also have something called academic guild which controls everything. But whatever it be, uh, it's a it's a very very Small set of people who could become architects, but now it's a extremely diverse set of people. For that, the questions of how you train an architect, how do you shape individuals to 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 actually challenge their basic understanding of what their subjectivity is, and to make them what I at the end call the creative self is something very important. So as we go through these various years, what we do is we take the students through. Through the studios, which actually start shaping the self. Okay, and and while doing that, we engage with the collective. The collective is the other. Okay, and there's a relationship. So you become aware of what you are. Okay, to be a creative personality, and you also become aware of what is the other. What is the collective about? So let's understand how do we do that. So uh, this is something as I said, it's a small school. We have two courses. One is the undergraduate program and the postgraduate program. Okay, a lot of these programs have been evolved. Um, let me tell you. Let me explain to you. The strong part of KRVI is the KRVI design cell. Okay, and we have been working very closely in the city of Mumbai. That's how we have started. Actually, it's a research cell, and a lot of our work happens here. But the work doesn't remain with the faculty only. It actually, we engage our students, our past graduates. In fact, some of our studio programs even come from this research and design cell. We get them involved actually in this project. I'll show you the project later. So, so as I'm trying to draw a relationship between research and what we do in the program, various program, whether it be our undergraduate or postgraduate, our programs actually work very cohesively. We don't have uh, too much of There's a separation between the master's program and the undergraduate program. Also, a lot of the undergraduate and postgraduate program also work together. Okay, uh, obviously, then we have something called the curricula. I mean, only what the university does not specify, but these are extremely important aspects of the program itself. Okay, uh, encounter the program where we actually I'll show you some of the where we uh, very closely. Work with uh, various other cultural practitioners, with people who are from the field of development, uh, professionals. Okay, that's something we have. We have obviously the, you have heard of the study trips. Very important to the architecture college. The exchange program. That's another important aspect that we have, and the workshops which are separately done by students. Which are taken by students and what we call as the Kamla Rahija Memorial Lecture Series. Something I'll I'll go through and explain what what happens. 
Okay, so this is just the encounters to explain to you that they can be aligned professionals, they can be architect, we have Snoeta coming to college, okay, national, international architect, okay, we obviously have uh, Abanis coming to college, but to us, it's very important that we actually engage with our students and introduce to them to the whole idea of cultural practice and where architecture is located in that. Because our cultural practice, as I have been trying to explain to you, like uh, there's a lot to learn from the, the other disciplines, whether it be the field of art, whether it be the field of filmmaking, whether it be the art of the field of the performative arts, I think it's very important in the KRVI. In fact, I'll show you some of our research projects, which are extremely multidisciplinary. And uh, so that's something very important to us. Okay, our study trips, extremely important. And uh, from the first year to the second year, we have very clear intents of our study trips. They, are, they, are, they actually feed into our studio projects. They are just not going there and visiting. They feed into the studio projects. And, they, and as I have listed down, these are studio projects which are right from uh, the study trips, right from the first year to the masters. That's how we actually look into the study trip. We have an integrated and holistic understanding between both the courses. And let me just tell you that there's a lot of learning between the students if we work in this manner. As we have said, we are small, we are just a family. Okay, uh, just to show you some of the study trip work, uh, this is the documentation uh, with the students had done done in the Himalayas, uh, settlement culture. Okay, and uh, very important to this uh, documentation. I know it, it's it's a it's a good drawing. I understand that, but in this, if you see, it's just not that we document buildings. Okay, here you have seen that we try to document even lives, even narratives of 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 everyday people, and they find space in the building. Okay. And something we have been experimenting with. We have been trying to experiment with the, with the idea of uh, the study trip, which becomes a possibility for knowledge creation. In fact, we have moved from documenting buildings, from documenting environments along with people, how they use space, and how like different people have different characters, which might be based in class, ethnicity, caste. All these are very important aspects to us. Okay. Then we have the exchange program. We have three types of exchange program. We have exchange programs which are project-based. Okay, so two universities, one us and the other university decide that we have a common uh, thing to discuss. So we have a program with the University of British Columbia. They come, their students come here and we send our students there. So uh, the common theme we discussed was water networks. Water networks across Mumbai and across Vancouver. And uh, though the concerns are same, the learnings are completely different. The learnings, uh, the water networks in Vancouver as compared to Mumbai, okay, they have important learnings for both. And thus the project exchange, and we have such project exchange with many schools, some in, uh, one in Canada, two in the, three in the, uh, with the, with the, in, the in the Europe, that is TU Delft, one, one, one again in France, another in Germany, Okay, and we have also got a platform for Asian urbanism, that's what we call, okay, where schools in Asia, schools in Asia come together and share knowledge. Okay, that's the network exchange. It's a sharing of knowledge. So the network exchange is another very important aspect for us, where multiple schools come together to actually, and this is a very important even learning for us. And then obviously the traditional semester exchange where a student goes, okay to another another university while their students come here so these are the three forms of exchange that we have just to show you some of the work which we had done with school in Taiwan and KRVI okay then we will speak about the Kamla Reja memorial lecture series it's a very important aspect where it's a, it's a platform actually where we sorry where we where we actually uh, it's an annual event where we discuss various issues, whether it be uh, architectural, whether it be urbanism, within the other disciplines and architecture. Very important, we partner with various organizations. Okay, it could be uh, organizations like um, NAI is the Netherlands Architecture Institute, IUDI is the 
Institute of Urban Design. Okay, so we have many partners, maybe foreign partners, maybe Indian partners, and the formats are varying depending upon various types of possibilities that we develop with the partners. But what it does, the outcome of these things, finally for the students, are various collaborative projects. In fact, our master's program, which we actually established in the year 2006, came out from these platforms. Okay, came out from our research program to a certain extent. We started gaining a certain expertise there. And also what happened was uh, like uh, our other programs, like exchange, exchange programs started here. So these are clearly uh, uh, seminal to the idea of how we create the, the school itself. Uh, this is something very important. This is our research and design cell. Started in the year 1996 with a landmark project, the Mills of Mumbai. Anybody, I'm sure uh, people who know what the mills are, they are historic fabrics of Mumbai, the industrial district of Mumbai. And this is a project we did with uh, Charles Korea at that point of time. The school worked with Charles Korea to make an alternative plan for the mills of Mumbai, an extremely debated project. So uh, we actually work in the realm of advocacy. The school works in the realm of advocacy for the city. And most of the projects you will understand are very, very, uh, EWF is called the Eastern Waterfront. The Eastern Waterfront is now getting developed, but uh, we did this project in 2003. We were the first school actually to work with the UDRI, the Urban Design Research Institute in collaboration with them to document and understand what this place is. Otherwise a complete black box. Okay, uh, we, have, uh, we are looking at environment and conservation. We look at informal housing, okay other informal systems whether it be bazaars whether it be whether it be other uh, informal livelihood activities so these are things which are very specific to the city of mumbai but now we are broadening actually the start is here but we are broadening into other cities because you can use the same framework in fact some of the schools uh, extremely important projects that we have been uh, working with this uh, uh, slum called dharavi right from the time when Dharavi redevelopment was proposed. In fact, we were a part of the expert committee, which was a, advising the, 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 the uh, government as to how this could be done sensitively. Okay, so with that, I come to the understanding, how does the research and design cell work? We understand this is, a, this is actually a poster we had prepared for an exhibition that we were uh, invited to in the Tate Modern in London. Okay, and uh, we had understood the city as a contested terrain, especially a city like Mumbai, okay, with various actors and agencies. So one of our work is to work with these various actors and agencies. And let me just tell you about the design cell. More, all our projects are funded. So if we have been doing work, even with the local community, the good thing about working with the local community is that they have actually come forward and helped us financially. They have come, come and financed the project. And that's something very important to us because it opens up what architecture can do. For us, I don't think architects have to wait for clients. You can actually build your project with the community and take it to the, uh, to the municipality and tell them that this can be done. And one such project is something which we have been doing with the community at Juhu itself, okay, our local community. And, uh, with the help of uh, people like Javed Akhtar and then PK Das who was involved in it, we got projects in actually implemented. Okay, though the school was the platform, the school did not finally go into to uh, go into to implement the project. It was done by Javed Akhtar Ji, then PK Das, all but the school did the study, the school provided the research that the compilation was done in this locality. Okay, another way we work is being multidisciplinary. This is a very, very important project. It's called the Cinema City Project, where we were the, the, the Kamla Reja School of Architecture was the, was a, the, 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 the institutional partner. There were many other artists, filmmakers who were involved, and we were trying to understand the relationship of the cinema and the city, how uh, cinema is dependent on the city, and how cinema shapes the city, both. And as I've said, we were working with a multidisciplinary set of people. In fact, the work, finally the work, uh, we have actually, I'll talk about the faculty later. We have artists. The work got exhibited at the National Gallery of Modern Art, okay, Mumbai. 
and this uh, exhibition actually was moving also nationally in various uh, 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 galleries and uh, and that is something unique to the krvi because uh, this is a approach that we promote the idea of the multidisciplinary okay uh, the very much the other aspect of research project is the network project okay so we have we are a part of this project which is funded by the european union okay we have this is this is second pro third project rather funded by the european union and we we work along with the european colleges and uh, so we have been this is called the project is called building resilient urban communities called the brucom brucom and uh, we have been looking at this issue of resilience and uh, very pertinent to the city pertinent to what is happening right now our cities are in a state of shock though the shock has been created by a by a health emergency it is in a state of shock you are seeing visuals in your screen okay i think personally i think architecture can play a huge role in this so so when i'm talking to a set of participants actually who want to decide whether to and what can be done in architecture i think i think personally the field is expanded okay yeah for me as i have told again it's just not a career it's a calling okay and well you have to decide uh, whether you uh, want to be a part of such a possibility okay uh, well the other aspect is the fellowship program okay which we have it's a research program funded by us and this is primarily for uh, students who have just graduated and uh, this also feeds to our they, they, they form importantly our teaching assistant sometimes but this is actually uh, to even give before a student goes for the postgraduate program the program what it does it helps you to actually sharpen your research skills sharpen your concerns and this is something as i have said we we fund this is some of the programs we have been running this program right from 1997 a lot of work is there in our college so so what do we do with so much work because we have a school which started in 1992 okay we have completed our 25th year also in fact very integral to our uh, effort is the fact that we archive knowledge we archive what we are doing in the school okay i call them simultaneous uh, like things which come out due to day to day activities whether it be studio work whether it be preparation of a course material course content whether it be all your study trip material we have made what is now called the digital archive okay and what this digital archive does over time and this is a part of the library actually what the digital uh, archive does over time is it creates platforms for discussions and debates okay it helps you to create publications it helps you to create exhibitions at a later point of time maybe after 25 years when you have archived the work and what it does finally is helps you to create new knowledge okay it's very important that the that the school stands for creating new knowledge because as i have told you explained you to the first slide itself knowledge formation is important to architecture if even the profession wants to go ahead and always create new values knowledge formation is very very important and we are the seat the institutes are the seat of spontaneous knowledge creation that's what i believe okay so just to show you examples of how we use that material to create publications like we have sorry we have been archiving our master's course for quite a long time and after archiving we understand that there are very strong stands which are emerging in our uh, uh, in the thesis which the students are doing and these are actually issues which are of concern today to everybody to everybody of us as individuals living in cities is all these are concerns so so and this happens because of a process of constant archiving and obviously just to show you that uh, there are exhibitions and exhibition platforms which we do which also form very important uh, part of our so last two slides okay so i come back to the first slide which i showed you okay i have removed some of the material okay and i after we have been trying to understand what does our alumni do because that's finally uh, some way it it is indicator of our success indicator of what we are trying to do not the success in terms of big names and icons i'm actually not bothered about it 
I am actually looking at how whether our original intents, original intents that provide a broader understanding of what architecture can do, is that uh, achieved? So, so now we have understood from a, a from a survey that 76% of our students are either in the design or what is called development professionals. They are in World Bank. Okay, they are in they are areas in municipalities. They are in MMRDA, that is the regional development authorities. They actually are I, what I call as development professionals. There's a design professional also. There are people who are very successful, iconic architects. 76% form that. 7% form actually academicians and researchers. Okay. And rest 13, rest 13%, I 14%, I believe. Rest of 13 or 14, whatever it is. Sorry for my mathematics, I'm quite weak at that. Whatever the rest actually are cultural practitioners and in other fields. Okay. And where architecture matters. In fact, some of them, as I've told you, some of them are product designers, some of them are set designers. Okay. Some of them obviously are writing books. So, and this this we believe is a very important aspect. Like, and that's what I believe and understand that architecture as a metaphor is a is a much broader understanding where you can contribute, whether it be software design, whether it be uh, leading organizations, I think architects can have a role and architecture prepares you for that. Last uh, slide actually. So what are we? How do we manage it? Okay, so we have a very strong set of professionals who are from the building industry, who are well-known figures in the city of Mumbai and other places also who come to our college. Then uh, as a cultural practice, we have historians and theorists who come into our college. So we are, there's a strong community of that in our college. We have academicians and researchers. I've shown you some of our research projects, okay, which they undertake. And we have obviously philosophers and critics also a part. So we are a, 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 like a multiple community of thinkers, multiple community, and that's what the KRV allows. The KRV allows for that possibility. Okay, and through this, uh, because let us just understand the multiple communities always don't work in tandem. There are a lot of tensions and debates and fights and everything. But fundamentally, we believe that's fine. Okay, as long as those tensions are creative, as long as those tensions help us to create new knowledge, we are fine with it. So with that, I would like to thank you. Thank you, sir, and for then. your words. And, and that was a really interesting presentation. Thank you for joining us today. So coming to an end of this session today, um, it is extremely insightful. I'm sure every, each and every one of us are amused and enlightened by the speakers and the colleges who have presented today. I immensely thank all the speakers who have so profoundly educated us on this platform and spared us your valuable time and honoring us with your presence. I would also like to thank RVS Chennai Padmavati School of Architecture for creating this open platform for these aspiring uh, young minds who are very eagerly looking forward to finally get a chance to know these colleges in depth and sow the seeds to their future choices. Next Level Architecture Education Week truly is one, is one of its kind, an online platform to allow both architecture institutions and students pursuing BARC to delegate and explore one another on the same platform. For, uh, for tomorrow's segment, we have the following renowned institutions joining us. We have IIT Roorkee, NIT Raipur, Manipal University Jaipur, BSSA Balwan Seth School of Architecture Mumbai, RV College of Architecture Bangalore, Asian School of Architecture and Design Innovation Kochi. I finally thank our participants who have joined us across the country and internationally. I request the students to kindly join at 2.30 p.m. tomorrow since many other students were not able to join the session because of last minute registrations. I hope you all enjoyed and benefited from this session. Thank you once again. Have a great evening. Goodbye.